in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then god God's is going to visit you God's thank you for watching please pay attention inside and outside and um, I was just thinking through what the Lord had put in my heart to share with us tonight. Your dominion in life is a summation of your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. I've said this again and again and I want us to please pay attention. Every gate can be opened if you have the key, not if you want it opened. Gates only open when you have the keys. Desire is not enough to bring you to the place of destiny and breakthrough. And so, as we keep coming week after week, I want you to realize that there is a transformation that is happening. And that transformation is happening by the power of the word of God. The word of God not only gives you knowledge, it translates you to become what he's saying. And it empowers you to demonstrate the reality of what you claim to know. Any truth that you have and you know that cannot be demonstrated is not yet a revelation in your life. Hallelujah. And so I want to challenge us that our passion in this place, we must keep our passions high, even as we seek to press, to know him and to understand his ways. I give you a guarantee. The Bible says they are life to them, those who find them. Not everybody will find them. They are not life to Christians, to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Ah, Kenny, it's good to see you. Hallelujah. And so I want to share with us a few things that will challenge us. Because it's my desire that the least of us will be as great as David. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowledge is like an atmosphere. It commands possibilities in your life. It's not about trying. It's either it is there is not hallelujah are you blessed already so make sure that you are learning constructively the goal is not just to carry out a service you know that we have no business with religion here the goal is to empower you praise the Lord come promise look at this please bring your what you are holding Watch this, everyone. What is he holding? What is he holding? You are holding a book. You are aware you are holding a book. If I try to convince you that you are not holding anything, will you agree? Is it an issue of prayer? You are, this is called reality. You are holding on to something that has become a conviction. Please listen to me. This is not something you are trying to believe. This is not something that is subject to debate or the opinions of men. See, the degree to which you become stable in the kingdom, um, your stability is proportionate to the depth of your conviction. Whenever you are not convinced about a reality, it's easy for you to drift. Either when it does not yet produce results, or when there seem to be conflicting opinions the apostle said but i know whom i have believed i wasn't just told about him 
I know. He says, and I am persuaded. Unshakable, immovable. That revelation has become a conviction for me. And I stand upon it. This is what God is doing with us. Bringing us to a point where we are convicted. That you know that you are holding something. You are holding something. That you can take to the world. And no devil, no culture, no system, no limitation, no gate can stop you. It's not just a prophecy. It's a resultant effect of paying attention. There are some things when you hold on to, you have entered your Sabbath. It's not if, it is when it will come. Is God speaking to us now? Thank you. Acts chapter 3. The Bible talks to us about the activities of the early church. Please pay attention. Jesus had resurrected. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1 how that he was with them for a period of 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom he was helping them to be grounded in truth are we together and after the holy ghost had come in acts chapter 3 the bible says in the hour of prayer they were going to pray and then they saw a man he was begging for arms he had been there at gate beautiful and the Bible says this time around, when Peter and John came, Peter looked at him. And he made a very interesting statement in verse 6. Chapter 3 of Acts, verse 6. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. He says, but what? Such as I have. The question is, at what point did he know he had it? Because there was a time he did not have it. Is that true? at what point what was the evidence that what happens to a man to know you've had something are you getting what i'm saying now he said such as i have i give i have something and i'm not only it's not just i am aware of it and it can be dispensed i have it i know that i have it I understand the dynamics of his operation and I can release it to you. He said, such as I have, I give. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let's see what happened the next verse, please. Watch what happened. He says, when he said that the man was still sitting, he didn't stand up. He was still sitting. And the Bible says, his sitting was not going to sway Peter. For Peter to say, I'm not sure again. Peter said, I know I have it. Whether you don't respond, it doesn't change my persuasion. Such as I have. You don't know the activities that sponsor my conviction. Your refusing to act is too small to shake me. And he held his hands. Because he knew he had something. And he was insisting, I have something. And when I speak to you, there should be an effect. And if there is no effect, I insist. He says, such as I have, many of us seeing that man seated would have quietly moved away for the shame. That is lack of conviction. You, you think you have something. Now a man stands before you and challenges your conviction. And at once you chicken out. But Peter said, no way, I know I have it. You are just meeting me. You don't know who else I have met. You don't know the 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 revelations that support my audacity i know i have something and the man was just looking many people have told me to try standing up and peter said you don't know me and the bible says he held his hands he knew he had something that revelation persuaded him enough he stood before that challenge and would not be embarrassed because he knew it must work hmm. is god speaking to us he says and he took him by the hand and what and lifted him and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength to validate that he had something to give listen peter would have looked at him and said well john you too you saw i tried we did exactly what jesus said oh god please don't be embarrassed after all we didn't collect money and he would have gone back that would not change the fact that he had something but it was not released Peter said, such as I have, 
I'm not only aware, I understand that it is supposed to be dispensed. And I refuse to allow what I am seeing to influence my convictions. It says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Not confused. Persuaded. The problem with the church is lack of persuasion. The grounds upon which our audacity is standing upon is fragile. We don't take time to establish conviction upon kingdom realities. We're in a hurry to get Rema. We're in a hurry to get revelation. We're in a hurry to get knowledge. Let me tell you something. The world is ruled by men of conviction, dead or alive. You don't respect a man because you believe in him. You respect a man because of consistency of conviction. When a man becomes unbending, he, he commands your respect at once. That's why we cannot pretend that Boko Haram is a force to reckon with. They will be defeated, but their convictions are strong. Strong unto death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The only reason, the only reason why faith is an issue in the church is because our convictions are small. Hallelujah. And so when we sit down like this, as the word of God comes, it gives us understanding. It not only tells you what you have, it explains to you the dynamics of it. So that you get to a realm of persuasion. Where nothing can shake you say amen. amen listen pay attention to what i'm saying because life will challenge it at any level ask any leader life will challenge your convictions from head to toe and the gates will only open when you prove that you merit it opening not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are things that are rewards rewards for consistency rewards for persuasion hallelujah are we together when the holy spirit comes please listen when the holy spirit comes upon a believer at new birth i want you to know that the coming of the holy spirit in every one believer that gives his life to christ introduces the presence of God to that man's life a presentation of the presence of the father the Bible tells us again and again is that true so when the Holy Spirit comes listen comes to live in you he represents the presence of God and with him is a measure of God's ability at work in you everybody say God's ability say it one more time God's ability say God's energy say God's capacity when the Holy Spirit dwells in a man his presence comes with a measure of God's ability at work in that man now whether or not you know it whether or not you use it is a different thing but that is the truth because scripture cannot be broken are we together now so when the Holy Spirit comes he comes with a measure of God's ability this is very interesting because the kingdom was designed never to function absolutely by the strength of man listen the changes that humanity requires cannot be affected just by the, the strength of man it cannot just be affected by intellect it cannot just be affected by kindness and charity it takes more than that it takes an ability that is supernatural it takes the ability of God to bring transformation, not just preaching. Do you know what it means to speak to a man and just by speaking, make that man change his ideologies? An ideology that he has hold or he's held through for decades and then in one meeting you speak and he's persuaded enough. It's called utterance, not oratory. Oratory is the ability to speak well. You learn that in school. Utterance is the capacity to communicate spiritual realities. 
on the strength of God's ability such that the listener is able to enter into your experience that is utterance it's not oratory what we have in church is oratory but we need utterance it's a gate that gives you access to the ability of the spirit to persuade men such that they subscribe to the value system of the kingdom are we together so the ability of the holy spirit that brings it that divine life many christians jump and about having the divine life but we do not see the evidence of that divine life that divine life that dwells within you and it comes with a measure of the ability of the spirit if you do not recognize that there is an ability of the spirit that is at work in you you will rob yourself of the capacity to function like god god gave us his ability so that we can produce his result listen listen only god's kind of result can bring change and impact in our world only god's kind of result can bring blessings only god's kind of result can bring lifting only god's kind of result can bring transformation if you're with me say amen god's ability that's what we call power that's what we call the anointing the anointing is not oil the anointing is god's energy his very ability we define power in physics as what work done per unit time energy expanded that's exactly the definition of the ability of god his capacity when god wants to do anything he depends on his ability and so when he sends you as his ambassador he gives you his ability god's ability say it again god's ability one definition of frustration is to try to achieve god's kind of result with your ability you will see how crippled you look in life say after me i have the ability of god how many people have gone to seek people out of zeal and kindness you are sick sam in the name of jesus be healed by their ability they want to see god's result but they are conscious of their ability no it is not given to man please hear me it is not given to man to produce god's result with his ability how many pastors and churches are frustrated because they are trying to get growth they are trying to get this and, and all kinds of teachings it takes the ability of god shout it god's ability listen listen i'm telling you this don't just allow the scientific world fool you the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm it was james the apostle that told us for as the body without the spirit there must be a spirit component to everything for it to work i don't care what it is if there is no spirit component it is there there must be a spirit component to business there must be a spirit component to your academics there must be a spirit component to marriage i love you i love you is not enough there must be a spirit component there must be a spirit component to anything that we do the problem is many times we ignore the spiritual side because we think it is not necessary oh my goodness oh my goodness how helpless a man is brothers and sisters how helpless in the face of this cruel life there are gates on every mountain there are giants on every mountain it doesn't take stories to move them it takes the ability there are devils standing on the gates of your finances it takes the ability of god why do we need the ability of god is his power to effect changes listen change can never occur until the power of god is present in a place any kind of change the ability to effect change from healings to miracles to soul winning to transformation it is entirely dependent on the ability of god
there are so many people who try to do evangelism sincerely from their heart but there is no ability how many times have we stood in the face of situations that honestly demand the touch of God but we know that we are short of God's ability God gave you his ability so that you can truly produce change the Bible says in John chapter 15 it says herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit so then shall ye be my disciples God wants us to bear fruit but it takes an ability an ability higher and greater than yourself are you getting what I'm saying now? the second reason why we need the ability of God is to be able to produce supernatural results please write it down supernatural results if your results are natural the world does not have space for you the 21st century does not have space for natural results the minimum standard in our world today is a supernatural it takes an ability of God for a mortal man to produce results out of proportion hmm. the Bible says they were astonished when they saw Jesus Christ and they saw the kinds of results that he was producing let me tell you something don't ever allow anybody preach you into thinking results do not matter in the school of greatness only God sees the heart men can only see the outward appearance please are you hearing what I'm saying don't ever let anyone fool you it's God that can see the heart you can die with your good intentions if you want to influence men you must let your light shine not let your light glow it must shine for men to see not angels God wants them to see it it is in the seeing that they become persuaded therefore permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and as a result glorify your father John 17 verse 1 Jesus was speaking he said now the hour has come he was speaking to the Lord he said glorify now thy son to the end that thy son will bring you glory so the only way God is glorified is when we are glorified our glorification is a means to an end not an end in itself it gives God the opportunity because no man can praise himself you need another to praise you it's against the law of greatness for you to praise yourself when you praise yourself it's called arrogance when another man praises you it's called honor hallelujah so we need the ability of God to produce changes there are people here who are sick it doesn't take stories we can shout and jump around and just make a lot of noise when they tell your dad in the office or your mom we are going to fire you brothers and sisters it takes the ability of the spirit to change it when the landlord tells you tomorrow if you cannot bring your money you are out it takes what the ability of God the problem is this we have ignored the ability of God in the church we believe in God but we have ignored his ability that anointing that agency of the spirit that empowers men to produce change and to produce results this ministry by the grace of God is a testimony of God's ability the ability of God walking through men and I want that to become your testimony from tonight that tonight you will give up on just trying to get things happen by your strength when you depend on God's ability you will see results that are out of proportion praise the Lord tonight is a very simple teaching until the ability that is within a believer is released he can never be a blessing to his generation I want you to know this until the ability that is resident within a believer is released not acquired not gotten your being anointed does not make any meaning to your generation until that anointing is released the release of that ability is what brings about blessings 
the bible says no man lights a lamp and puts it under a bush no man does that but you the purpose of lighting it is so that it can give illumination and direction so until the ability or the anointing is released the believer can never be a blessing you only become a blessing when you allow the measure of God's ability in you to find expression in your physical world. The Bible says, and the word became flesh and did what? It now dwelt among men and they beheld the glory. They could never behold the glory for as long as it was in the realm of the spirit. But when it became flesh, Shadrach, it's good to see you. I'm happy seeing my people. Praise the Lord. The word became flesh. The anointing that God has given you, when it translates into wisdom that men can relate with, when it translates into creativity that men can relate with, when it translates into dunamis power, the capacity to produce change here and now, then Christ is glorified. Otherwise, we'll keep talking a lot of stories. That which is resident within you must find expression for Christ to be glorified. Are we together now now the problem with many of us seated here is not that we are not anointed it's not that the hand of god is not upon our lives but that inability to understand the dynamics of expressing the ability of god is what has crippled us and so we stand before mountains we can walk over and yet we cry before them the reason is because we have not come to a point where we realize that the ability of God is at work in us. Moses, listen, Moses stood before the Red Sea. God did not add anything to him. Right there, there was the ability to cross over. But he was afraid. When he went back, God just said, why are you coming to me? I gave you a rod. The word is in your mouth. Tell the people to move forward. He went back and did what he would have done in the first place. Do you know that many times when you go to God, most of the things you get from him is comfort because actually you have the ability to do what you do but just because our psychology is built around just hearing something from god and so god said it is well now go and then you get up and go you would have done that right away are you getting what i'm saying now your going and that reception of comfort was just to encourage you but all the while the ability was within you when he appeared to gideon in the book of judges chapter 6 when he looked at him what did he call him oh thou mighty man of failure but gideon was hiding there was no special impartation service he just said gideon what is going on ah, gideon said god you too you know what is going is happening and he began to tell him how that he was going to go and defeat the midianites there is an ability within you I'll never forget the first time God told me this thing listen it's not enough to know God is mighty this was a song that gave me that revelation you know this song Lord you reign forever Lord you reign forever I worship you yes ago I was singing this song I worship you this was the part that changed me you reign you reign you reign you reign that's you talking to the lord and i heard it very clearly like a man singing back to me this was what i heard you reign cause i reign you reign cause i reign you reign this is what god is telling me back he's responding to my worship and saying son it's not enough to know i reign there's no confusion about that the trouble is here on earth so reign because i reign now that you are aware i've told you you are like me i expect a legislation that is consistent with what is happening in heaven that way the kingdom comes it's not enough to say lord i know you are reigning what is happening to us here we are dying keep reigning let's keep dying no no it says thy kingdom come thy will be done where in the earth not in heaven there is no confusion about order in heaven the confusion is here so he says rain and it gave me an understanding not just this thing people jump around i'm a king i'm a king and go and die like a fool you jump based on knowledge and revelation see you can have something and you can take it anywhere 
believe me i know what i'm saying a man can have something and you can hold on to it and run with it that's what god is speaking to us he reigns so you reign he reigns so you reign so he expects you to legislate ah. listen listen a man called saint patrick have you heard about saint patrick a man called saint patrick the son of the king had died for six months how many months six months they had buried him and it was it was bringing a lot of catastrophe and that man called saint patrick walked straight to the grave and signed his name on it saint patrick and they opened it and dug out a human being alive it's in history men who knew they had something not independent of god listen with god all things are possible i've demonstrated it for you here come promise can i use you again with promise all things are possible without him some things are no longer possible but with him the word with god here means in partnership in partnership that's why we call it koinonia in partnership there is an ability you and god constitute an unbeatable team have you watched wrestling how they can beat somebody as if they are passing him through a meat machine and then on the other side his colleague is there bouncing and saying touch me show that you 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 are weak but we are a tag team is that true if you win we share the money together if you lose we lose together it's a partnership and so the holy ghost is standing and telling you look look you have been going around this mountain why don't you come into partnership with me there is an ability within you listen listen there is an ability it's called energies the greek word is energies it says now unto him philippians 3 uh, uh, 20 unto him who is able he has an ability to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think not according to his might according to the power that works not in heaven in you in you the possibilities in your life are dependent on activating the anointing and the ability of the spirit within you and so like the wrestling someone lifts his hands and have you seen the way people touch the other i mean they almost have no strength and they touch somebody else and he jumps in and plays nonsense with the one who has been beating his colleague and wins and then he holds the guy who is a team together and they lift the belt together he doesn't leave the belt and say you when you are tired stand up and walk home he lifts him and says we won listen i'm bringing you into a revelation that your victory starts from the standpoint a consciousness that with you and the holy ghost never do anything outside of the holy ghost you will fail it's not a prophecy it was designed to happen that way master we have toiled all night but in partnership with your word let's go back and watch a miracle are you hearing what i'm saying now prophet elijah outside of the holy spirit he could not say anything he said look guys you want prophecy from me i can't move my human ability cannot do anything but play me a mistrial and the moment they began to play when the holy ghost came upon him he said now i have something to say fill these ditches with water you may not see wind you may not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water listen that is not yet possible in your life does not mean it is not possible it's amazing how a challenge can be killing you and somebody will come and pass it as if it does not exist there is an ability that sponsors that audacity and i want you to know that if you are in christ that ability is within you there is an ability i walk conscious of this every time i go to minister i walk conscious of this and the lord walking with them and the holy spirit walking not just in joshua selman but with joshua selman there is a partnership it's a koinonia we're inseparable it's like the a salt covenant 
where I am foolish I trust his wisdom where I am confused there is strength when I stand before a sick body I know I am very aware I'm intelligent enough to know that you cannot squeeze out cancer from somebody and it disappears at once I'm smart enough to know that that cancer is matter it has weight it can occupy space but then when his ability comes shabalakatayaba hmm. when his ability comes that's when the difference see listen don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you this is your recipe this is your key to unstoppable unstoppable exploits in the kingdom the ability of the spirit Let's take a few things. I want us to pray. Let's take down a few things. You must allow the measure of God's anointing within you to find expression and produce testimonies in the lives of people. Just two or three things I'll say again and then we'll pray. God's ability in a man can grow and it can increase. The ability of God that is resident within a man can grow every living thing grows god's ability is alive and so it can grow that you have received a measure of that ability listen listen the ability of the spirit in a man is like currency let me explain to you something please look up please look up who has money somebody give me money one thousand five hundred hundred watch this if this is 200 naira how many things can 200 naira buy 200 naira can buy a bottle of minerals is that true can it buy wine but is it money at least it can buy some things are you getting what i'm saying now let me explain to you something about god's ability god's ability in you can only solve problems that are within the range of the dimension of that ability anything higher than that measure watch this that measure cannot be solved although you have the ability listen 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 i want you to get this the ability of the spirit the anointing of the spirit at work in people is in levels and there are possibilities that are activated within that level and that measure are you getting what i'm saying when the measure of god's ability is at work in you every problem every giant every mountain that is within that range of power will be solved but everything higher than it will remain an obstacle get this revelation and you will see the reason why although you are anointed some things have not changed praise the lord are you getting what i'm saying now thank you just like this currency watch this this is 200 naira it can buy wine mama put you can eat something with this now yam and, and akarankose watch this i can eat akarankose at mama put with this comfortably with dignity can this take you to a five-star hotel the restaurant but is this money so what do you need to do if you want to go to a five-star hotel increase the same thing not a different thing increase a measure of the very same thing are you getting what i'm saying listen that you have a measure does not mean the challenges in life respond to measures of the anointing measures of graces don't let any man fool you that the moment you have an ability it can solve every problem it's not true those who talk those things have not worked in the anointing believe me i know what i'm saying this is what i work in every day it's like a range when you upgrade on the level of the anointing that's why the bible says he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet but i got to a level where that would not be enough again then he had to measure a thousand cubits and the river increased and it was to my knees are we together now and then he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my lungs then he measured a thousand cubits and it was an overflowing river and he said everywhere that river went whatever was dead came alive 
there are different levels of the anointing the ability of the spirit so a mountain can jump and leave and you go to another mountain and you can be shouting everything you know and the mountain steers you there are sick bodies that we may struggle around with in many crusades in Nigeria and those sick bodies can be there let Benny Hill step in just two songs of worship I guarantee you not he has not even if he's talking about relationship it doesn't matter he can even teach on how to be a nice housewife and while he is teaching see the anointing does not care what is happening it whenever he sees a need and a demand for it it flows there immediately are you getting what I'm saying now so God's ability in you responding to a situation you can have a challenging issue that looks like a mountain and someone comes with the ability of God and brings a dimension of wisdom you never thought of and dissolves that thing in one minute and it's over case closed the ability of the spirit that was what happened to Daniel they were about to slaughter them and kill them and he said ah, ah, why is the king hasty in this all these people have tried their ability he said please just give us time and the Bible says in the night the secret was revealed to Daniel and he got up in the morning and answered the king same thing happened to Joseph see how men took their generations by the ability of the spirit Joseph did not become a prime minister because of interpretation of dreams Joseph became a prime minister because he offered a very serious supernatural solution to the problem if you had interpreted dreams they would have said okay we have had you please um, water go and lock him up and he would have just gone back highest they would have given him a day off and he's back to the prison but he was smart enough in addition to the dream he said i know this the answer this is what we should do and when he said that look at him i love joseph he said oh king find a man he knew there was no man find a man check around don't trivialize my grace find a man if you can find another man with it no problem and the king said is he not here we kept quarreling asking people to come and interpret the dreams where can we find such a man That's why we worship the Lord truly because there is nobody like him are you getting what I'm saying that's the reason why we worship him we love him searched all over couldn't find nobody I looked high and low still couldn't find nobody nobody prayed Nobody better know. Nobody better than you. Listen, there is something the Spirit of God will do to you that this song will become for you. No, not just for God. I want you to always be conscious of I. God can give you a territory. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to listen to me. God can put something upon your life that will make. Let me not go ahead of myself. Thank you, sir. That you come to a point where there is something in you without any show of pride you know it's not cheap and you know it's not what you find by the roadside listen when you explore the ability of God in you from border to border you will enter your Sabbath experientially I guarantee you hmm. the Bible says now there remaineth a rest for the people of God Hebrews chapter 4 right and he says let us therefore labor the word labor there is content even as unto death to enter that rest for he that has entered that rest has ceased from his works there are two ways the ability of God in you can grow number one is by revelation 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 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge through knowledge the word knowledge there's the word translated epignosis a comprehension of truth that makes the person who is knowing it and what is known become one not just awareness 
is actually the word that is interpreted intercourse so grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge hallelujah revelation when light comes to you then you will arise the bible says they that sat in darkness they have seen a great light great light arise and shine isaiah 60 it says for your light is come not your light is around the light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you it says is one revelation god gave me watch this please if you are if you're a minister of the gospel here let me share with you a secret please look up money does not make a great ministry are you hearing what i'm saying you don't let any man fool you money does not make a great ministry it is impact that makes a great ministry and supplies finances financing ministry is a product of impact are you getting what i'm saying now impact and this is how it happens when your light starts shining gentiles will come unbelievers drug addicts all kinds of people will come kings will never come to your light when you become consistent and you keep growing it will start attracting brightness and excellence is a language there are those who know how to speak it the moment you start speaking their language they will come it says gentiles shall come to your light there is a level of ministry where all you see are gentiles people who are coming to be saved those coming to be sick somebody dragging his trolley of problems and coming to dump it and then you have to work on it but the time will come as your light begins to become bright like the day kings will start coming kings don't come to your light they come to the brightness the brightness of your rising and when they come like queen sheba they will not come empty-handed they will come with their bounties they will come with their blessings the wise men from the east when they saw jesus christ they came with gold they came with frankincense they came with man they came to honor him every time there is brightness it begins to draw certain kinds of people so there are many men of god who are trying to look for money they are trying to look for money because they think money makes an impactful ministry what an error it doesn't work that way money is only a reward money is a receipt for doing something right we've learned it here when you get money as a man of god is a receipt just like you buy something the receipt means you have paid for it not you will pay for it the receipt is an evidence that something has been done not is being done not will be done but the problem is we trivialize the ability of the spirit in us how many of us have looked like gideon and felt that there is nothing within us oh there is that great man of god there there is that great woman of god there and we forget mary was there standing and an angel appears to her and says blessed are you women among this and that and that and then he told her that she was going to carry a child and she said how shall these things be in other words naturally this should not happen seeing that i know not a man and the angel said something which is key for us this night it says the power of the highest that's how it happens the power of the highest shall overshadow you how can i be the last born in my family and yet i'm the one god will use to wipe the tears of people he says the power of the highest there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon you the second key to growing in the anointing and in god's ability is impartation 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 is a transference of spiritual virtues transference of spirits transference of possibilities a man who is a possessor of a dimension of possibility can share it like you use a candle to light another it is a possibility in the spirit that's the character of the dimension of god's ability called dunamis it's an ability that is capable of being reproduced listen I've said it again and again 
a true leader does not maintain followers a true leader reproduces himself and turns followers into leaders if joshua selman remains a superstar and an anointed man everybody keeps clapping i have failed from the world's perspective and from the perspective of mediocres we keep clapping but let me tell you something god's dimension of measure or his index of measuring success is not just by the crowd we have inside and outside it is the individuals becoming a replica of his grace and anointing and his ability god measures success one by one he doesn't measure success by a crowd thank god for all of that it's an evidence of the hand of god but if we are to sample 10 people at random and engage you with spiritual challenges and see how you are able to navigate through the dynamics of the operation of the spirit it is a true measure of the success of this ministry the ability to be empowered and carry that conviction and go and begin to produce results around your sphere of influence and i insist that it must happen to you in the name of jesus christ so impartation and revelation write this down very quickly the channels for releasing the ability of god the ability of god must be released please burn this into your mind i'm being very simple tonight because i want us to have this basic understanding before we pray the anointing the ability of the spirit must be released for people to be blessed by it it must be released it's not just the obtaining of the ability of God, but the dispensing, the release of it. That's what brings blessings to people. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, is working in me. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, it's working in me, it's God's ability, God's ability is working in me. Is working in me. Sing it with me. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. And so when a mountain stands before you and you carry this ability. You will move with audacity. Humanly speaking, you should chicken out. Come on. But I love David. David stands with a sling, conscious of an ability that is bigger than him. And Goliath said, am I a dog? I know I will kill you, but at least respect me. Come with knife. As if you are fighting a man. And David said, I will not, I will disgrace you. Let me even tell you how I will kill you. This is what will happen. This sling will hit you and I will remove your head. It's God's ability. When you see men do supernatural things, brothers and sisters, I want you to know it's God's ability. What you see happening tonight is God's ability. The energy, the very strength of God, manifested as wisdom, manifested as power, manifested as faith, manifested the, the ability of God is what we call grace. Whether grace to become or grace to do is all called grace and it's God's ability. That's what makes men champions. That's what makes men wonderful people. It's the ability of God. The ability of God is like a programming. It's like a software. When it enters you, you are infected. There's nothing you can do about it. The moment you carry it, your environment begins to respond. That's the treasure that we have in earthen vessels. It's not about the vessel, but the treasure. And God designed it. The only way you benefit from the treasure is to carry the vessel along. That's the reason why when a man is anointed, 
you don't bring out the anointing and keep him you carry the man too as you honor the anointing you honor him when you bless the anointing anointing cannot eat is the vessel that eats it as his benefit for paying attention he's working in me look at the bible full of people who took advantage of this divine ability if you get this one thing i'm teaching you you will change your life in a remarkable way hallelujah play this mic aaron sent me a text before i came here pastor and um he sent me a text and said man of god i want you to explain to me what exactly happened in portacot and then i looked and he said i was going to talk with him i shared my portacot story i shared it here right pastor he came from portacot it's a land of greatness and a land of plenty listen i was going to portacot and all i had watch this although god has corrected me recently because i've been running my mouth saying things i've grown now god has corrected me recently in one of my retreats i've been corrected so i will update my curriculum because i keep saying all i had was my bag that bag was a seed i know the kind of faith that brought that bag that bag was a seed i remember dragging that bag and the ministry was about this size then everybody and they were all escorting me as if they were going for a funeral and that was how we went to the park that park in um that park on your way to kaduna just this one yes that Kwangila park and they dropped me there and i was laughing they were pity because they knew aside from my bus fare all i had left home and abroad in terms of monetary value was 800 naira and i was going to a land i had never gone to but i did not like the woman in second kings chapter 4 i forgot that i had an ability i kept looking at my rickety bag and all of this listen I dropped at number 23 Quarry Street around to 2 in the afternoon. When I dropped there, I knew I was stupid for sure because no right thinking human being would do what I had done. And I stopped there, 800 naira. And I knew it would be foolish for me to try to look for a hotel to stay. So the closest thing was at least to finish up the 800 naira and eat something with it. So I went to one my mother was sharing something and watch this one thing i knew was that i was going to reign in that land i didn't know how to describe it but i knew there was an ability sometimes you need to come to the end of your road to now find out what you have been calling spare part whereas that is all you need second kings chapter 4 the woman lost everything the husband used the children as collateral when everything had gone the prophet said what do you have in your house he said nothing except and he said you call it except the vessel is only the oil is small because of the vessel that took it not because it is small when you expand capacity the oil will increase with it he said the oil is much is only because the oil was housed in a small vessel borrow vessel enlarge your capacity and when that woman did that she became rich with it so i went there i'll never forget when i was eating the holy spirit just sent a signal to my spirit and i found out one of my friends that used to live there and i called him and i told him i'm here this and that and that can i come and stay for a while and then i came i went to the house and i stayed there listen my money had finished let me tell you what happened i was broke there was i mean things were bad then his sister was sick when his sister was sick i wasn't happy that she was sick don't misunderstand me but at least i was comforted that something <laughs> listen undertakers are not happy that people die but at least it is the make <laughs> are you getting what i'm saying now and so when she said she was sick i prayed for her when she was healed she came with a seed of 1000 naira listen that 1000 naira was what i used to buy my suit to do my first ministration the suit was not what you sell around 
the suit was this kind you see this kind that they move around with it you just call the man listen let me tell you a secret it's better than many things they hang around nobody will know it's only you that will know ah oh yes are we together now i remember my friend in abuja calling one pastor in port Harcourt and say a mighty man of god is in town and he said all kinds of things about me and the man said and then it happened to be that the man was from my state watch this no 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 play that thing i'm going to sing this song a lot this song we started that's our special number for this night that god's ability song listen god is my witness when i took a bike to go and see the pastor he hosted us and another person we ate in his house and then he went to go and introduce me to the church as soon as i stepped into the building my eyes were open and i gave the pastor three prophecies three prophecies in the church are you with me three days after the prophecy the first one happened 0.5 million came into the church the overseer said call that man he's coming to preach on sunday there is an ability oh, it can open doors when all else fail Makata Labada. yes many things in life can fail don't trust them the real capital in your life is the anointing that one is fail proof certificate can fail internet can fail brother when all else fails reach out deep down God's ability God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. Listen, I went to the church. I bought the suit with the money. I can't remember how much. Dress looks smart. You will never know. Because I, I refused to. I knew that my present was a thing I just had to manage with. In my mind, I was light years ahead of my present. So I wasn't embarrassed by it. Because I knew my physical reality will necessarily, necessarily become my mindset and my perspective. When I went there on that Sunday morning, it was a Sunday morning, I was on my way to come and they sent me the message to preach. They said I should preach about vow. I said I fasted for three days for this opportunity. And you are now sending me the message. God had already given me a word. Listen, the man with the church was a prophet. He doesn't come out until after the service. When you finish preaching he will now come out and do his thing when i stepped in and i looked at the people i'd never seen a congregation of people who were that demonized and um there was you know we are used to we write our songs in zaria right so it's very difficult to sing these songs outside because we write our songs we receive them we compose them and i didn't know the kind of song to raise because uh, I wasn't used to all those songs. Our songs, you can be humming for 30 minutes. You don't do that there. There was one song that I remember. Now is the time for the new anointing. Gird up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. That was a song I raised. My goodness that meeting that meeting was something else it was it was it was an amazing meeting you can imagine the things that god did after that meeting i had honorarium i ate in the house of the pastor they took me to another place you know how they are they are not like the not here that ignore your grace till you die <laughs> right there once they see grace they celebrate it immediately it's not in the notes that they'll just look and say can you help me no they know how to am i lying pastor come on now they celebrate grace very generously and so we went there and from that meeting they said two weeks after the church was going to have a convention and i was going to be their major speaker listen from that time it was one meeting after one meeting after one encounter after one encounter after one encounter after one encounter and within six months my life had changed changed in a way i didn't even know where i was coming from again it had so changed the road had deleted behind me never to return there again 
that's why I never forget his ability when all else fail today I've stood before kings I've stood before politicians none of my certificates have brought me before these people but an ability of the spirit are you hearing what I'm saying so don't ignore it especially for some of you who are in school read your book but don't fool yourself the world we live in needs an ability of the spirit needs an ability of the spirit let's finish up mm. the primary channel for releasing God's ability is your words 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 where the word of a king is there is power Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the spirit entered me when he spake unto me an impartation a dispensing of that anointing he said and it set me upon my feet listen there are people sitting now hearing me you will stand up from this meeting and it's like something will suddenly rise within you and you will say i know i may not be any other thing but i'm anointed i may not be any other thing Kabalakata. i was teaching the school of ministry students and i taught them no matter what society says you are not they may be right but they are wrong when they say you are not anointed they may be right they may say you are not fine it may be true they may say you are from a background where the map of your village was not added when they were you don't even use gps to find it they are right but if they ignore the anointing they are wrong the anointing will make nations follow you on their knees and it will be a privilege for them to receive of your grace you will be standing surprised while they are saying thank you God's ability is released through words. Number three, your hands. Listen, please look up. I know that many of us have ignored our hands. I want everybody to look at your hands if you can. These hands. It's working in you. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in you. He's working in you. Listen. These hands you see, brothers and sisters, a hand is a mystery in the realm of the spirit. A hand is not what holds people. That's why the Bible talks about the right hand of God. It talks about the hand of God. The hands are also doors in the spirit. They are channels for releasing the anointing. The work of a man is done through his hands. When you realize that there is an ability on your hands, it will bring upon your life creativity. It will bring upon your life innovations. You will do things through your hands you will never believe possible. These hands, these hands can open the gates of nations to you. These hands can bring kingdoms to their knees. These hands can swing the two leaf gates of your destiny open. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, is working in me. Brothers and sisters, you are getting blessed right now because I am speaking. You are not hearing English. Some of you, you don't even know what is happening to you as you are listening to me. You don't know whether you should sit down, whether you should stand up because there is an ability. My mouth is a window. It's a window revealing the realm of the spirit. It's a window communicating the secret place. Something is happening to your spirit as you are receiving. This is not a lecture. This is not a lecture. It's an ability. The power of the Holy Ghost. It's working in you. <laughs> it's working in you. It's God's ability. God's ability. 
It's working in you. It's working in you. And so as you speak, the opening of your mouth is like the opening of the portals in the spirit. And you begin to speak. As you communicate those realities, you are changing people. They don't even know what is happening to them. They just know that there is an activity. It's not English. It's not oratory. It's called utterance. 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 It's by the ability of the spirit. It's not a lecture. You are changing men. You are using words to bring them in into an experience they cannot explain the ability of God walking in a man and so the spirit enters you the words come with fire the words come with illumination they do something to your spirit man it's like light some of you sometimes you don't even know what you are receiving you can't tell what is happening to you it's like hammer it's like fire you can't tell it's an ability it comes help that baby please it comes from heaven an ability of the spirit god's ability be sensitive i sense the anointing of the holy spirit already moving we're going to pray it's working in me that's what I want you to become so anointed so full of his ability the Bible says even God who quickened the dead and uses his mouth to call things he uses his mouth to make things happen that would not have happened the prophet said by this time he was not revealing he was creating it wouldn't have happened his words created it is working in me listen many of us have been speaking it's time for us to be communicators of light and power it's time for us to be communicators of divine reality i see the angels of the lord pouring what looks like oil on people this is what i see it's like an anointing coming on people strong anointing of the holy ghost god's ability it's an ability it's an ability of the Holy Ghost that the opening of your mouth is a gate in the spirit working in me working in me God's ability is God's ability it's working in me it's working in me shake a baba 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 God's ability it's God's ability it's working in me it's working in me sing it with me everybody God's ability God's ability is working in me. Shaba baba la kata baba baba. It's God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. Listen. Listen. The third way the ability of God is dispensed is through the instrument of your atmosphere. Mm. Listen, when you carry the ability of God, that ability creates like a spiritual electromagnetic field around you. Anybody that comes within that atmosphere, possibilities just like many of you are under this atmosphere right now and then sicknesses will leave just by themselves without any prayer there is an ability of the spirit when Saul came into an atmosphere where there was a principality called Samuel the atmosphere affected him and the spirit of prophecy fell upon him when the ability of God is at work in you, your atmosphere has prophetic implications. Your atmosphere has prophetic implications. It's 
working in me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. God's ability is released by faith. You release the ability of God by faith. Let me explain to you what I mean. The ability of the spirit, listen, is released on the strength of conviction. Your persuasion about who God is and what he has put in you sponsors your audacity to take action. Action based on that consciousness is called faith. We've taught a lot of dogma about faith. Faith is nothing based on just human asset. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your persuasion of who God is. And then the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word. Listen, the anointing of the Spirit is the principal capital in your life. Please hear me. Action that is based on your conviction. As action that is based on expectation by the ability of the spirit so your hands you expect that people will receive impartations this is how it works brothers and sisters there is an ability in you there is an ability in you you must know this there is an ability in you it's, it's not it's not about some gimmicks please this is not even about falling down it's called the mystery of godliness where god can dwell in a man so your body is like a puppet they are seeing you but there is another agency at work it's called the ability of god that's what will make you a wonder men will keep looking when they think they have exhausted you then you come from another dimension because you are connected to a supply that is eternal not bounded with time no fatigue is not bounded to the limitations of this system it's the ability of god the ability of god reproduce again and again and again and again it's not about trial and error. You can gain mastery in the dispensing of his ability. Yes, yes. Strongly belongs to those who are of full age, who by reason of use, they have gained mastery. It's like fighting. God's ability. It's God's ability. He's working in me. That's why we can tell you to come for this meeting and we can guarantee that you will be blessed. Yes, we can guarantee not on the strength of the flesh. There is an ability. No man's hardness can stand it. No matter how stubborn you are, it doesn't make any difference because when he shows up, the Bible says the voice of God upon the waters is mighty. Listen. This is what happens in the teachings. There are many people here who have come from other places and they cannot explain what happens to them when they listen to these teachings. It's not so much about the revelation. There is an ability in it that compels compliance. It's called anakazo. It's a Greek word. It's the compelling power of the spirit. It is with that ability that we can prophesy over your life and your job and it will change listen it's not just saying change change receive and all those things are cabbages what is the ability that sponsors it for i am a man under authority he says and on the strength of that authority i tell one go and he will go i tell one come and he will come how can cancer die god's ability how can a jobless person get a job before Monday God's ability how can a, a, a life I mean come on think about it people is the ability of the spirit it's not by might it's not by power there is an ability bigger than your effort bigger than your strength
His God's ability, help them please. His God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. There are three rewards when you can press to manifest the ability of God. There are three rewards. Reward number one is to become a desirable personality. Nations will desire you because you carry that which is needed. They may criticize you, but they will desire you. There is too much darkness in this world for the careers of the anointing to be ignored. It has nothing to do with ministry. That's the key to being an ambassador. The nations will look for you when you carry this capital called the anointing. It will open gates. You will become Beulah. You will become Hefzibah. The delight some land. You will become greatly desired when you carry this anointing. Listen. I have met men and women that no level of qualification in life would have given me access to them at this level. And I am amazed. I am amazed. I travel all the time. And I am humbled. People love me from regions to regions. It's not just that they love Joshua Selman. Many of them don't even know me. There is something. When you carry it, you become a joy of nations. When you carry that anointing, you become desirable. The anointing will make up for your weaknesses. It will make up big time. Listen. Listen. Years ago, there was somebody who wanted to go to NDA. And there is a height, there is a level to which if you are not as tall as that height, they will not take you. And the person who wanted to go there was lower than that height and when he went they dismissed him and he went and met the emir of zaria and the emir of zaria sent him with delegates that they should go and tell the commandant and the people that the emir has added his height did you hear what i said that the emir has added his height and they took him that's what the anointing does where you cannot enter Others are entering because they are intelligent. Others are entering because they have connection. When they come, they ask you, what do you have? And then you say, God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. God's ability. God's ability. It's working. Listen, they may they can't ignore you for too long. It won't be too long, somebody will be confused. You will be needed immediately. It won't be too long, somebody will be sick. Demons are still on earth, which guarantees that you remain valuable. Listen, listen, for as long as there is a demand. For your anointing, you remain valuable. Business tells us until you have something you are unnecessary. The anointing keeps you valuable forever. Stocks can rise and fall. Oil can rise and fall. But the anointing has equal value in every territory. God's ability. Listen. When you carry Naira, when you carry Naira, as soon as you get to London with Naira, Naira is no longer valuable. Is that true? You have to change it to another currency. When you travel to Israel, you have to change the pounds or euro to shekels to be able to use it. When you travel to Asia, you now have to change it to yen and the rest to use it. But the anointing, the way it works in Nigeria, when you get to UK, the 
there is no translation, there is no downgrading. Same sickness, same demons, same challenges. Listen, rich men fall sick. Rich men get confused. Politicians get confused. Have you seen certain businesses that are only for certain people? You only sell pampas for children. Abi, and an adult who is sick, an old man. A young man doesn't need pampas. Are you getting what I'm saying? You, you only bab somebody like me who always wants his hair low. If you want to shine it, let it shine. This is the way you do it. But somebody who keeps his head doesn't need it. There are certain things in life that are only for a group of people. The anointing is a master capital. It is relevant anywhere, everywhere, and at all times. You need it in business. You need it in your academics. You need it in marriage. Pursue me, students. You need it in your pursue me. No, 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 no. It's not just by the Y, the X. There is an ability. Let me tell you early enough. There is an ability of the spirit. Because you can write an exam well. And somebody can be marking your exam. And your script will fall down. There is an anointing that guarantees it remains there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number one, it brings you. It makes you greatly desired. Number two, the ability of God gives you favor with men. Ah. Please listen to my message, Activating Seasons of Greatness. Favor with men. And it does that in three dimensions. It gives you access to people, access to resources, and access to opportunities. These are the three things any man needs to succeed. Access to people. Access to resources, access to opportunities. The anointing brings access. Not everything is solved by money. Access is greater than money. Access. 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 Hallelujah. It's God's ability. Listen. We went Benin. We went Benin recently for a meeting. I say these things to encourage you. After the meeting, some people came in from Asaba and they shared a very touching testimony. And um, the pastors came in, great ministry, doing great things for God there. When they came in, they said this that they believe it to be an angel, but they said somebody at a point where the ministry really needed the hand of God somebody just entered with one of our teachings and gave them and left never to see him again never knew him he was just somebody who came and dropped it and left and the pastor said when they listened to it they got all the information and as at the time they were talking to me they said they had over 200 of the messages and it has revolutionized the people there are people today who know me and love this ministry i have never seen them in fact 75 percent of those who get blessed by this ministry who have never set our eyes some of them is just one message is a mystery is a mystery if you think it's ordinary try it just go online and put anything i don't care what just put anything and invite people there is an angel there is an angel of the lord's presence that signifies the word of god and sends it like an envoy hallelujah during my during my birthday i think we had compliments from over 16 nations 16 nations of the world that have been blessed by the ministry i've not gone to most of them see that but then it's coming there are people who take these messages by themselves and keep spreading that's their ministry that is like a covenant they signed with god brothers and sisters tonight i want you to give up on your strength outside of god I'm reducing your journey towards destiny. You will waste your time for nothing. And find out after 70 years that this is not how it works. But when the ability of God is upon you, it will make you a sign and a wonder. You will have unusual access. Access to things you will not pay for. The anointing will pay for things for you. Unusual access. Hallelujah. 
and finally the third reward for the ability of the spirit working in you is ever increasing honor honor let me tell you what honor is listen honor is not just recognition honor is the discernment of your uniqueness and the ability to reward it if you are not rewarded for your uniqueness it's not honor you can be recognized but when a man recognizes you and is willing to invest in you that is honor to honor is to esteem you with respect and dignity and that you'll be rewarded for your blessings almost every day of my life there are people blessing me sowing seeds doing all kinds of things i sat down this morning and i was talking to the lord i said lord what are you doing to me this is more than i have bargained for as soon as we arrived this evening i just came in and when i came out i was almost sometimes you see me come and sit down and i just put my head down i'm fighting tears many times because i remain humbled at the hand of god the kind of workers that god has given in this ministry i think they they are even it looks like they believe in the ministry more than me tomorrow is a leaders retreat and sunday is the workers retreat committed people with their life like madmen you try to coordinate people like that and you see how easy it is of course they are trained of course there are principles but the force of cohesion is the ability of the spirit there is an anointing tonight listen i want everybody hearing the sound of my voice inside and outside you're going to make up your mind tonight and say lord I'm tired of this inferiority and complex. It may not have been your fault to have come from the background you came from, but it can change. I love my father. He's a great man. And I see most of the things that happen in my life with him as ignorance. But there was a time my father spoke to me and said, I was going to become a failure in this life. And his prayer is that I fail alone. And not bring other people about four years ago my father got down on his knees and asked me to pray for him the anointing of the spirit will make you a desire of nations see forget about the meager criticisms you will receive it's nothing compared to the honor is one is to one million it is totally negligible believe me this is what I know. This is what my hands have handled. And I came with this word tonight. The anointing of the Spirit is an equalizer. It can cover for everything that went wrong. So you no longer have an excuse. No matter what else fails, when you are anointed, you still remain valuable. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. We are going to pray. And tonight I want us to pray because many of us are going to receive, there will be a lot of impartations in this place tonight. Especially for some of us who just came newly. Don't just come naively. Open up your heart. Let something fall on your life and change you forever. I have found my servant. Please give us Psalm 89. Verse 20. Psalm 89 verse 20. 89 verse 20. Help us media. This ability. That's why my secret place. Listen. My secret place remains my greatest asset. Not ministrations. The man of God, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, said something that blessed me one time. Listen. He said he was in a secret place praying and 
building and planning and something happened a big man supposedly a politician big man he came and spoke to him and said he wanted to see him and uh, he was with god one hour he didn't come out two hours he didn't come out three hours he didn't come out and the wife was already getting embarrassed that how can you leave a big man like this and they went to knock and one of his daughters went to knock and then he opened the door and she was saying daddy why attend to this man let him go and he looked at her compassionately and he said my daughter see them he said do you know why this man is here he's here because of what i am doing he's not here because he likes me he's here because there is an anointing he needs he needs direction he needs a prophetic word if i stop doing what i'm doing he will not come back again let him wait that's why my secret place is the greatest song. You don't find me gallivanting around. I'm like a herbalist. You don't see me strolling around and then buying orange, peeling it and just moving around. No, because you are gathered here tonight because you love God. It is true. But you have come to hear a man who you consider to be anointed. And the only reason why you will keep coming and listening and the only reason why nations will keep coming is because of this ability. The miracle service is by the corner. There are sick people, HIV, cancer, all kinds of oppressed people. In this place right now, there are families that have traveled kilometers to come. And they are trusting God for a touch. And so, the greatest publicity of a believer, men of God, get this, is the secret place. That's the place you receive strength. That's the place you receive innovation. That is where you receive wisdom. He says, I have found David my servant. And with my holy oil, I smeared him with oil that activated an ability. Let's look at the next three verses. 21. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm shall also strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. 24. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. He said, Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Listen. My prayer is that the least among us here will be as great as David. But you know, if you take it from the standpoint of intelligence, there are people who are a thousand times more intelligent than you. Your advantage in the kingdom is the backing of the spirit. Aye. Please listen. If you keep me side by side with brilliant people, I may not have too much to say. If you keep me side by side with intellectuals, I may have something to say, but maybe not much. If you keep me around older people, they have experience. I may only have little to say. If you keep me around people, the world is full of cynical people. Even if I want to bless them, they will not believe in me. Either because I'm not their tribe or because of certain parameters. So my bailout is the anointing. I guard the anointing upon my life jealously. I can lose everything but not his presence and the anointing that he brings. He says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horns. Listen, God can exalt the horn of a man. God spoke to us that this is the season of the rain. And the rain is already falling i tell you people's stories are changing god is taking people to newer levels of wealth newer levels of the anointing newer levels of the spirit inside and outside some of you are standing there are no seats standing by the fence listen you are face to face with destiny it's not by might it's not by power but it's by my spirit if you've never believed in the ability of god in you i want you to believe it Ephesians 3.20 And then we'll pray. Ephesians chapter 3, please, verse 20. Help us, media. Verse 20. 
20. 320. Everyone read it together. Now unto him. Who is the him? The almighty God. Who is able to do. Say God is able to do. In me. Whatever he desires. God is able to do in me. God is able to do in me. Years ago when I saw these meetings. I, 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 I wouldn't say I didn't believe them. But it was difficult to explain it. See let me tell you something. There are times a vision can be so great there's no point trying to share it because nobody can understand but only be consistent when you begin to birth wonders then the world will know he's a mighty god and i want you to believe him he can change anyone's story god can make you the song of many like david the song upon the mouth of women and children, young and old. This is what will be somebody's story after this miracle service. It says, he make it. Who makes it? Ah! And we're standing here only because you may. He make it so God can make it happen. It is within his power. To make it happen he make it the barren woman to keep house and then he says to be a joyful mother of what the only reason why you should stop giving birth is mutual understanding between you and your wife not a situation that has pegged you and saying that child will not come no a joyful mother a joyful mother of children a joyful mother of children one last scripture exodus 23 verse 26 exodus 23 i like you to read it one to read there shall nothing cast her young nor be barren in thy land he didn't say there shall no one he said nothing nothing do you know your money can be barren? Many other things in your life can be barren. It says, There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Brothers and sisters, it's time to get angry. To know that every trace of barrenness, regardless of how it appears, is of the devil and must be dealt with as such. Three keys to fruitfulness, very quickly. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing very quickly to fruitfulness the first key is to treat fruitfulness as a command have an understanding that fruitfulness is not an opinion it's not an opinion that is left to your personal desire fruitfulness is a command fruitfulness is a command genesis 128 fruitfulness is a command anything that is not fruitful in your life is causing your life to be disobedient towards the word of god anything anything the moment you see your life not producing result in any aspect there is a spirit forcing your life to reflect obedience disobedience 
Fruitfulness is a command. Barrenness is an attempt to make you violate that command. Number two, the second key to fruitfulness is that obedience to kingdom principles will deliver the desired result. It's not enough to have the understanding that it's a command. There are principles that compel your partnership with the word of God in order to get that result. Principles scattered through scripture are several principles that are responsible for certain manifestations of God's grace in our lives. Are we together? Praise God. Are we together now? Sorry about that. Obedience to kingdom principles will deliver desired result. Listen please. Wishing and crying helps you but it does not help your situation. Are we together now? God is moved by your tears but he only responds to his word. He's moved by your tears. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. It's called compassion. But for results to happen in your life, you must activate the word. The woman with the issue of blood had been crying, but nothing happened. But she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Obedience to kingdom principles. For instance, when it comes to finances, your tithe, your giving, Kingdom investments and the opportunity and the platform to provide value remain the irrefutable keys to wealth and abundance. There is no theology around it. Are we together? There is no magic and mysticism around it. Obedience to kingdom principles. Now, most of us want miracles of fruitfulness. Listen. We want miracles of fruitfulness in our lives. But we are unwilling to pay that price of alignment. There are people who are not consistent tithers. They have an idea that tithing is, um, is a system. Men of God just corner the money and they enjoy it. I mean, that, that, that is such a deception. See how cheap you gave yourself to Satan. How much is what you are bringing? For you to believe that is the reason why a man will compromise on his faith. There are all kinds of theological ideas sponsored by the gate of hell that keep people poor. Are we together? How about trusting and believing God to make you whole? Do you know there are people who do not believe? Listen, listen. There are people who do not believe in some of these testimonies you hear in the church. Maybe not in Koinonia, but in the body of Christ. When they hear something like fibroid disappear, they just look and say, oh, we agree. They don't lie. Let's clap. You see, we, we mock ourselves because we have so fraternized with unbelief. It has become our template. You never refuse to agree that the person was not born with the growth. It came from nowhere. You believe that one. That it went back to where it came from. You don't believe it. Are we together? Oh, someone's genotype changed. Or a woman gave birth to triplets and twins. Some of you, where is the woman? Let her come. Let's see. I must see with my own eyes. You see, let me tell you something. Do not over-intellectualize spiritual things. They are far beyond the realm of the intellect. If you learn to believe God with childlike faith and say, Lord, I know this is true. When will you believe? Are we together? Honestly, there are some of us we have never really believed anything truly. You have only been aware that it happened. But that conviction, no. I'm a believer. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Especially for those of us, listen, especially for those of us who, who claim to be a light, we have allowed education to take the place of God. And then we want God to give you a science 
on how these things will happen. Are we together now? God, you need to show me how this will be this and produce this. And then God says, me? Give you that explanation? The Bible says for us, you do not know the way of the wind. Nor how bones are formed in her that has a child. How a seed, a little seed from a man becomes the bones of a child that you cannot break with your hand. Explain that mystery. Say, so you do not know the way of God. Tonight, I want you to believe don't sit down asking, will this genotype really change? Will I really be delivered? Will God bless me just like that? I remember one time, people were joining the queue, I think some months ago, just to see me after service. And then um, a particular, I think it was a lady or so, just met me and she was ranting all her problems, what she felt, you know, she felt, look, I need special time. And I just touched her, I said, it's done. She said, no, no, you don't understand. I'm trying to, I said, it's done. What are all these long stories you are? It's done. I touched you, I said, it's done. Now, I know what her problem will be. Even if his pain is not on her head, you just touch me and say, it's done. That's how it works. It works at the speed of faith. The woman with the issue of blood did not touch the hands of Jesus. She touched the hem. Frankly, any part she touched would have produced the same result. It was never about what she touched. Are we together now? We have seen all kinds of testimonies just with one word. Just with one supernatural word. My neighbor then, I think she's somewhere here. She shared her testimony here. You've heard the testimony of the miracle that God did. Supernatural miracle. All kinds of devilish things. And they said all kinds of things were, you know, growing and all of that in her stomach. It came out. It passed out like a woman gives birth to a child. In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua Selman of Eternity Network, Network International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Change our lives. Change our destinies forever. <laughs> Can you lift your voice and just begin to sing in the spirit? Just pray and sing in the spirit. It's <laughs> Jesus, we give you praise tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I assure you tonight the Lord will surprise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord who brought us together will give you a testimony. He will move above and beyond your request. In the name of Jesus Christ. Especially for those of us who came from far, believe me, you are not going to waste your time. Even if I were a herbalist, if you came from a long distance, I would use the best of the ability within my power to bless you. Even if it were for my name's sake, I would still do it. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts, how much more shall your heavenly father, how much more shall your heavenly father? In one minute, just say, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. In the name of Jesus, be seated. Please, God bless you. Welcome to our miracle service for the month of October. Those outside, we welcome you. Those following online, you are welcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
the lord who brought us together will do us good tonight in the name of jesus christ i also want to welcome everyone coming from far thank you so much for taking all the trips the sacrifice and for the thousands of people following us online thank you the lord will touch you distance is no barrier in the spirit in the name of jesus christ please help me appreciate my friend pastor pete rock god bless you bless you bless you hallelujah happy to see you again i honor you sir god bless you and pastor jakes is in the house hallelujah <laughs> praise the lord thank you so much i honor every man woman of god in this place the lord will lift you in jesus name tonight we are here to attack barrenness and um, we are here to challenge it call it the name it is and tell it where to go to in the name of jesus christ tonight we are here to attack unfruitfulness we are here to challenge lack of results it's important to know why we are here tonight are we together now and that means everything that has refused to leave you must go this night nothing goes by itself a force greater than it will have to dislodge it and that power is available tonight in the name of jesus genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 verse 1 verse 1 And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Put your name there. Are you ready to read? One to read. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman as he had said. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman as he had spoken. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord has declared that this is a miracle service for the month of October. And he will do as he has spoken in the name of jesus just to guide us to a few things to challenge our faith and then we'll get to the business of the night um i found some very interesting things while i prepared for this service and i just want to challenge our hearts in the name of jesus praise the lord genesis 1 28 the bible tells us how that God made man and God gave him specific instructions Genesis 1 28 was not an advice it was not a suggestion it was a command are we together and when God gives a command we are supposed to obey it says and God blessed them and said unto them the first word be fruitful he said unto them he didn't say there's an opportunity to be fruitful and i hope that you consider it it was a command be fruitful then he says multiply multiply reproduce yourself and your kind and then he says replenish the earth and subdue it he says and have sovereign control or dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth so god made man and gave him adam an instruction and in that instruction he said be fruitful it was not an advice it was not a suggestion it was not his opinion for your consideration are we together now the same way he said ye must be born again that means ye must be fruitful be fruitful 
and then it says multiply the best description of this verse is found in isaiah 32 verse 15 be fruitful and multiply it says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then it says the wilderness see the levels will be counted for a fruitful vine that's a fruitful vine and then the fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's not fruitfulness that's multiplication are we together so he says be fruitful meaning if you are not fruitful something is making you live in disobedience it's not about your benefit you are insulting the command of god be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion and you see it is in the character of satan listen please it's in the character of satan to carefully hear what god has said because his assignment is to prove that the lordship of christ is a mirage and so his the, the his assignment begins only when god speaks satan cannot do anything if god has not spoken because his job is to make the word of god of non-effect so he listens carefully and he's patient isn't it interesting that even to destroy you it is activated at the coming of god's word if god has not said anything about you satan has nothing to do to you because his assignment is to oppose the word of god so i could imagine satan carefully paying attention to the speakings of god and when he told man be fruitful i can imagine satan telling the demons assignment number one barrenness multiply keep people in one place and so he goes around attempting to insult the integrity of god's word to the end that our conviction about god will be questioned and then ultimately we will lose trust and confidence in him be fruitful multiply be fruitful multiply be fruitful the concept of barrenness listen listen barrenness is not the absence of a child barrenness is the absence of results any kind of result any kind of results the inability to produce desired results children finances the level of influence the level of growth any any um activity that is able to inhibit us from producing to capacity is called barrenness are we together now jesus did not hide his opinion about barrenness when he saw the tree that had leaves and would not produce figs the bible did not say let's give it time as it were in other parables he usually it was in his culture to be patient but not with barrenness are you hearing what i'm saying now it was in the character of jesus to see an unfruitful tree and then say okay give it time maybe they didn't water it well but when he was aware it was barrenness he cost it immediately are we together now we do not serve the lord for results however at a point in our christian experience there must come a time when our lives will begin to relate with the possibilities that are in god this relationship that we call results prove two things number one the love and the goodness of god is important the goodness of god is a dimension of his glory that reveals his benevolence his ability to freely give there is such a dimension of god's glory called his goodness are we together and so barrenness is a very dangerous force do you know while i was studying uh preparing for this miracle service i discovered generally speaking but specifically to barrenness now fruitfulness fruit of the womb do you know it is said that six out of every ten families six out of every ten families have one kind of fruitfulness or fertility problem 
where was barrenness when our grandparents gave birth to 15 children without CS? I'll tell you where it were. Those our parents were idol worshippers. So there was nothing to attack. So one woman gave birth to 15 children without twins. One, 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 one. Of that hot fire with knives. And yet after 15 children she would stand strong. But the moment you declare that you are signing to another government. Satan now came up with a system to stop the continuity of God's agenda. Listen, let me tell you, there is a bridge between us and the next prophetic speakings of God. Most of our parents and grandparents did not give their lives to Christ or did not walk in the fullness of the system of the kingdom. We became the fruit of that carelessness. Somewhere along our journey to adulthood, God intercepted prophetically and started leading us to understand the systems of God. And already that, that is a transgenerational threat to the gate of hell. Because the meaning of that is that a generation will come that does not know wickedness. A generation will come that does not know father fighting mother. A generation will come that does not know um, all these kinds of things. There will be a generation that will corporately lift up the name of the Lord. And Satan said, no way. So the first assignment is to stop your faith. If it happens that you have passed that level, then he now finds a system to keep you alone with your conviction till you die so that it will end the process. Are we together now? Mm. let me tell you something reproduction is a powerful thing it's not about giving birth to children it's about reproducing your values it's about giving God more space I hope you know that without a material body God cannot find expression and not everybody can host him a body has thou prepared for me so our generation is preparing bodies and this is a threat to the gate of darkness Barrenness is not about refusing to make you take in. No, it's not about impotency. No, barrenness is an agenda. It's an agenda to stop any platform that can create continuity of people raised after the image of their fathers and mothers who are themselves after the image of God. Our dispensation was the first to reveal the possibility of reproduction through birth. Every other dispensation before our church age had creation, not reproduction. Are we together now? And so God will create. The celestial beings were created. Now when God created Adam, I hope you know that Satan was once in heaven. He had never seen the possibility of reproduction through birth. That a man and a woman can come through a system of reproduction and give birth to another human being. It was not part of his understanding. So when Adam and Eve fell, he knew that there was no possibility again. And then to his surprise, he saw Eve pregnant. Now this was strange. He didn't even know the name of what it was. What was causing this woman's stomach to protrude? After nine months, here comes another person. And Satan knew that this is a strategy. That means whatever is in a man can be reproduced through many children that means a woman can actually hold a child i told you women are gates in the spirit women are gates in the spirit that's why demons oppress them it's not gender the only gates that can authorize another life to be made flesh so barrenness is an agenda marriage is just the focal point of that warfare but that's not the only place are we together there is nothing that gives satan joy as watching the frustration that comes in the life of a believer as a result of repeated frustration and stagnation the human spirit was designed to be motivated on the strength of progress everything that is alive grows everything that is alive moves lack of growth and progress is a symbol of death 
are we together now so it appears in different forms a lady will keep herself and serve God a man will keep himself and serve God sweating in the house of God and get married and all of a sudden hilarious medical reports begin to evolve themselves fibroid they say the man is impotent are we together now and then it continues like that um, my assignment tonight is to get you very angry with anything that looks like barrenness in your life you've heard the testimonies it should go it can go if you insist hallelujah mm, barrenness it's a terrible thing it's a terrible thing to live a barren life look around our society and you see barrenness speaking everywhere a man begins to build a house and for 10 years it has not gotten to linter level until he dies he leaves it there it's called barrenness it's called barrenness let me tell you something when you buy your first car at age 50 it's not a testimony are we together now when certain things do you know certain things in life have a time period when their coming will be relevant to your living there are it's not just that they should arrive they must arrive on time so that they can be used for the purpose for which they came hmm. are we together now barrenness there's some fruitfulness everywhere there are people's lives it's even consoling if one aspect of your life is working and then another aspect is not working at least he will give you the impetus to face it but there are people seated here nothing is working completely when i say nothing your health is not working your life is not working your brain is not working your body is not working your emotions are not working nothing is working it's called barrenness it's an agenda if you see it as an issue you will not address it enough when you see it as an agenda a plot you will destroy it with every sense of seriousness don't just look at it as an issue that is just embarrassing me that's too small a motivation to fight it look at it as an agenda that seeks to be transgenerational and then you attack it whether you have a child or not this is not for people who do not have children you know we have this ugly religious mindset of saying at least i have uh, my first um sets of children twins i have another twins what am i looking for that's even a sign that your brain is barren you may not be barren in terms of physical barrenness but it's all working well the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age he said and the lord had blessed him in all things second kings chapter 5 says naman there was a man called naman he said he was a captain of the syrian army and the bible says he was a man who was valiant for wars but he was leprous when i was preparing for this meeting i took a clean sheet of paper to write out everything that was working in my life and everything that was not working and i presented it to god i said lord we are flogging it out this night don't sit down fooling yourself just focusing on the things that are working thank god for them but do not say because five things are working let me let the other two you must force those two to work hmm. say amen Let me give you a few scriptures specifically for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I don't know how you will motivate yourself tonight, but believe God, believe God, believe God. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. Please help us media. Let's be very fast. There's a lot to do tonight. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. I want you to read it, please. If you're a child of God, read it loud. One to read thou shalt be blessed above all people uh-huh there shall not be male or female barren among you or your what the only people obeying this scripture are animals the only sets of people obeying this scripture are animals they don't pray they don't fast they give birth anyhow anywhere under any condition 
any condition. It says, Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female. Men can be barren. Women can be barren. Pastors can be barren. Parents can be barren. Families can be barren. Territories and nations can be barren. Hallelujah. Are we together now? And then it says there shall not be male or female barren among you. That means if you are experiencing any form of barrenness, it cannot be God. I'm giving you reason to attack these things as from the devil. Do not create any theology under any circumstance to justify barrenness of any sort. Don't be embarrassed by it, but summon the courage tonight to call it what it is and face it squarely. Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5. Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5. Psalm 127 please. Verse 3 to 5 very quickly. It says, Lo! Read it please. Children are what? Um, this scripture is a very powerful scripture. It never said children come from men. The seed that gives them bodies come from men. But children are a heritage from the Lord. Read on please. We are not done media. It says as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man so are the children that are giving birth to early so are the children that are giving birth to early you are it's not just the children of your youth there is something about youthfulness and giving birth even biologically without any sense of insult but even biologically we understand that when a woman has stayed so long and is about to give to, to give birth there there are certain kinds of sicknesses and imperfections and deformities that may likely happen like down syndrome and so on and so forth the bible talks about the children of your youth verse 5 happy is the man whose quiver is what i don't know about you but I don't believe in having only one child because two is at least the number of witness and there are certain things that only happen when two or three ah come on now i'm preaching to somebody go ahead respect your ideology but the more you know god the more you become a believer hallelujah happy he didn't say sad children can make men happy brothers and sisters let me tell you I have met wealthy people who the only thing they pray for is a child. Are we together? They will pay any amount. They will go any length. They just need a child. Not prosperity, not a job. Happy is the man that his quiver is full of them. He says they shall not be. Society has an ugly way of stigmatizing people. In every area of barrenness, but especially on fruitfulness. Especially in Nigeria. The average time they give you is two weeks. Once you are married, people are, or it's ladies that first start. They look at the signs, they look at your face. The men don't know, they don't care. To, they will catch up later after four or five months. I mean, but the women, they're already looking. And then after two months, someone will confront you and say jokes. Ah, when is Junior coming? Now, you think it's a joke after a few months they won't laugh about it when they are saying it again we live in a society especially africa after nine months if you cannot give birth to a child your persecution starts immediately are we together and then i'm still surprised that with the age of knowledge and intelligence we still have all kinds of people you know driven by culture and all of these cultural ideologies oh i married a witch that's the reason why i'm not giving birth and all of that 
and so on and so forth. If the man, your seed is required for the woman and she's a witch, what are you? For it not working. You see that? We victimize women shamefully. And then we think, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. This is a stupid woman that I got married to. No, no. Listen, listen. Barrenness is an entirely spiritual thing. Forget about the medical report you came with. I am telling you, the origin of barrenness. The, see, barrenness, fibroid, and all kinds of demonic operations, they are related. It's the same system that brought them. Listen to me. Fibroid is an attempt to mimic a child between you and a spirit. Fibroid is not just an object growing. It's growing at a pace that is not consistent with your normal body growth. Meaning another life is sponsoring it. Are we together now? Yeah. So you have a woman get pregnant. She's rejoicing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The moment the doctor announces... She goes to bed in the night and all kinds of strangers, depending on what episode, a man, a woman, all kinds of people come and the next thing, the woman has lost the pregnancy. And while people are insulting her because we live in a society that, that who, whose conscience has been so numbed, we can insult people without finding what is going on. The cure for barrenness is not counseling. Counseling does not drive out demons. Fibroid is real. You can feel it. It can destroy you. Impotency is real. Whether you believe it or not. And do you know, this affects Christians more because we are guided by certain principles until marriage. So there's no room to ordinarily find out what is wrong with you. You just marry and get the shock immediately. That, that quest for obedience prepared the healthy environment for Satan to manifest it. But the devil is a liar tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I once prayed for a woman who said she would be sitting down. God is my witness. And physically pastor. Physically. Physically physically feel a man come to her as though sleeping with her I'm, i don't mean in a, in a vision wide awake any time of the day that stranger just comes claiming legal rights and holds over god's people and stopping them for years let me tell you another thing with barrenness it does not live by itself any kind of barrenness one day my miracle will come it's not a wise approach not with barrenness uh -uh. Mm -mm. you've got to get up and say today today is the day one day is it, it looks like a consolation but you never receive results from it one day i know i'll build that house one day i know Abba, is it not turn by turn there are all kinds of wise sayings. Life is turn by turn. Are you joking? There are some people who died. Their turn never came. You force your turn. Brothers and sisters, this thing is by force. You force your turn. You force your turn. Time and chance happens to all. It didn't say they receive it. It just says in God's equation, he made provision for everyone to have it. As I'm speaking to you, I'm very angry in my spirit. Because some things must change this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. I know families who have spent millions, literally, looking for the fruit of the womb. I know families who have been depressed. At all kinds of things. Do you know the one that pains me more? When a pastor becomes barren. That, 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 one, that one gets to me. It's, it's personal. You know why? Because Satan is like putting a billboard on the man's life. I am at work and there's nothing you can do about it. It's very painful. It's very painful. I've had the privilege of meeting men of God in different places and their one prayer. They come to me in the secret and they cry. 
They say, man of God, I lay my hands on others. They come back with twins. They come back with this. But I've not been able to have a child. And we have members whose mouths don't keep quiet. We run our mouths around with different episodes of what we think might be the explanation supporting the barrenness. Rather than taking it personal and go to God and say, no Lord, something must be done. Do you know what Abraham would have gone through? 25 years barrenness. Hallelujah. How about other aspects of barrenness? The inability for you to produce results in ministry. To the point that you are now doubting whether you are called or not. Are we together now? You used to shout before and say, I know God called me. But after two years with seven members alone. You're already keeping quiet now and say the most important thing is I'm obeying. You, you see, let me tell you, lack of result makes you to hide certain convictions. You will be forced to hide them. That's how Satan stops people. He doesn't shut your mouth. He stops the area of results. But we are going to pray. Listen, tonight I don't want you to feel embarrassed about confronting anything that is barrenness in your life. Are we together now? We are a family of faith and we are going to cry before the God of heaven and say, Lord, open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open a door that no man can shut. Hallelujah. There are pastors who are supposed to be at a level. They, they are doing everything scripturally. That should bring the kind of results they want. And yet nothing is working. Absolutely nothing is working. No ministry. People come receive miracles and go. All kinds of things happen. One day my result will come. Is a deception from hell. I'm telling you this again. You must insist and say, I make that one day today. Psalm 113 verse 9. Psalm 113 verse 9. Please help us media. Psalm 113 verse 9. This is what will be somebody's story after this miracle service. It says he make it. Who makes it? Ah. And we're standing here only because you may. He make it so God can make it happen. It is within his power to make it happen. He make it the barren woman to keep house. And then he says to be a joyful mother of what? The only reason why you should stop giving birth is mutual understanding between you and your wife. Not a situation that has pegged you and saying that child will not come. No. A joyful mother. A joyful mother of children. A joyful mother of children. One last scripture. Exodus 23 verse 26. Sila bakura Exodus 23. I like you to read it. One to read. There shall nothing cast her young, nor be barren in thy land. It didn't say there shall no one. It said nothing. Nothing. Do you know your money can be barren? Many other things in your life can be barren. It says, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Brothers and sisters, it's time to get angry. To know that every trace of barrenness, regardless of how it appears, is of the devil and must be dealt with as such. Three keys to fruitfulness, very quickly. When our backs were against the wall And it looked to see if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made You move mountains You cause walls to fall With your power you perform miracles There is nothing That's impossible And 
fruitfulness the first key is to treat fruitfulness as a command have an understanding that fruitfulness is not an opinion it's not an opinion that is left to your personal desire fruitfulness is a command fruitfulness is a command genesis 128 fruitfulness is a command anything that is not fruitful in your life is causing your life to be disobedient towards the word of god anything anything the moment you see your life not producing result in any aspect there is a spirit forcing your life to reflect obedience disobedience fruitfulness is a command barrenness is an attempt to make you violate that command Number two, the second key to fruitfulness is that obedience to kingdom principles will deliver the desired result. It's not enough to have the understanding that it's a command. There are principles that compel your partnership with the word of God in order to get that result. Principles scattered through scripture are several principles that are responsible for certain manifestations of God's grace in our lives. Are we together? Praise God. Are we together now? Sorry about that. Obedience to kingdom principles will deliver desired result. Listen please. Wishing and crying helps you but it does not help your situation. Are we together now? God is moved by your tears, but he only responds to his word. He is moved by your tears. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. It's called compassion. But for results to happen in your life, you must activate the word. The woman with the issue of blood had been crying, but nothing happened. But she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Obedience to kingdom principles. For instance... When it comes to finances, your tithe, your giving, kingdom investments, and the opportunity and the platform to provide value remain the irrefutable keys to wealth and abundance. There is no theology around it. Are we together? There is no magic and mysticism around it. Obedience to kingdom principles. Now, most of us want miracles of fruitfulness. Listen, we want miracles of fruitfulness in our lives, but we are unwilling to pay that price of alignment. There are people who are not consistent tithers. They have an idea that tithing is, um, is a system. Men of God just corner the money and they enjoy it. I mean, that, that, that is such a deception. See how cheap you gave yourself to Satan. How much is what you are bringing? For you to believe that is the reason why a man will compromise on his faith. There are all kinds of theological ideas sponsored by the gate of hell that keep people poor. Are we together? How about trusting and believing God to make you whole? Do you know there are people who do not believe? Listen, listen. There are people who do not believe in some of these testimonies you hear. In the church. Maybe not in Koinonia. But in the body of Christ. When they hear something like fibro disappear, they just look and say, oh, we agree. They don't lie. Let's clap. You see, we, we mock ourselves because we have so fraternized with unbelief. It has become our template. You never refuse to agree that the person was not born with the growth. It came from nowhere. You believe that one. That it went back to where it came from. You don't believe it. Are we together? Oh, someone's genotype changed. Or a woman gave birth to triplets and twins. Some of you, where is the woman? Let her come. Let's see. I must see with my own eyes. You see, let me tell you something. 
do not over intellectualize spiritual things they are far beyond the realm of intellect if you learn to believe god with childlike faith and say lord i know this is true when will you believe are we together honestly there are some of us we have never really believed anything truly you have only been aware that it happened but that conviction no i'm a believer oh, i believe god i believe god i'm a believer i'm a believer especially for those of us listen especially for those of us who who claim to be a light we have allowed education to take the place of god and then we want god to give you a science on how these things will happen are we together now god you need to show me how this will be this and produce this and then god says me give you that explanation the bible says for us you do not know the way of the wind nor how bones are formed in her that has a child how a seed a little seed from a man becomes the bones of a child that you cannot break with your hand explain that mystery says so you do not know the way of god tonight i want you to believe don't sit down asking will this genotype really change will i really be delivered will god bless me just like that i remember one time people were joining the queue i think some months ago just to see me after service and then um a particular i think it was a lady or so just met me and she was ranting all her problems what she felt you know she felt look i need special time and i just touched i said it's done she said no no you don't understand i'm trying to explain. i said it's done what all these long stories you are it's done i touched you i said it's done now i know what her problem will be even if his pain is not on her head you just touch me and say it's done that's how it works it works at the speed of faith The woman with the issue of blood did not touch the hands of Jesus. She touched the hem. Frankly, any part she touched would have produced the same result. It was never about what she touched. Are we together now? We have seen all kinds of testimonies just with one word. Just with one supernatural word. My neighbor then, I think she's somewhere here. She shared her testimony here. You've heard the testimony of the miracle that God did. Supernatural miracle. All kinds of devilish things. And they said all kinds of things were, you know, growing and all of that in her stomach. It came out. It passed out like a woman gives birth to a child. That's how it came. Oh, come on. See, this God, eh? Miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. Would you come and do a miracle, a miracle today? Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. One of the strategies of Satan in this season is to plant nonsense in the bodies of ladies. Very healthy lady, eating well. The moment she's about to marry, they will tell you something is wrong. Ovarian cyst fibroid somewhere or they'll say the womb has disappeared are we together fashions of stories sincerely communicated by well-meaning doctors but that's a manipulation somewhere are we together now to an extent some of you ladies now are looking at me you are even afraid you are not even sure you see all kinds of people even if you are prophesying about finances they are laying hands on their womb and say lord my own is not money just make sure that i give birth when has a good thing become a thing of fear are we together now and then the, the one that surprises me is the concept of impotency where they say a man no 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 that concept is a mirage plus plus you better disbelieve it gentlemen listen gentlemen listen to me don't ever don't ever i say it again allow anything to convince you that there is such a possibility like that it is it is it is an advanced form of witchcraft in the life of any man
Are we together now? Don't think I'm just talking. I know what I'm saying. What you tolerate, you will never change. What you give flimsy excuses for you, it will never leave you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want you to challenge yourself and tell yourself, I must have testimonies. Fruitfulness is a command. Number two, obedience to the principles of the kingdom is required to deliver your desired result. The last point I'll give us and then we'll pray is that in many cases, warfare slash deliverance may be required to receive your testimony. Now, you better believe this. In many cases, Obadiah 117, in many cases, warfare slash deliverance may be required to receive your testimony. That's not because you are a witch. That's not because you are a wizard. Away with that imbalanced communication to think that the moment devils are casted out of lives and people, it means that they are possessed. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And away with that wrong understanding, a believer cannot be possessed, but a believer can be greatly influenced. Your faculties can come under siege. Siege that will look like you are possessed of devils. Make sure that the construction of your belief is based on the word of God so that you don't shortchange yourself of certain possibilities. Look at me. There are many of us here seated looking at me. There are spirits sitting comfortably upon our lives and destinies. Every time things are not going well in your life and you do the best you can to keep certain kingdom principles, then I want you to know that you are not alone in that system. There is a stranger attempting to add to the equation something you did not add. If you keep quiet, that's how your life will go. Warfare, deliverance, contending with the powers that be. Satan will not let you go just because God said to. It takes force. A popular scripture that has become our anthem in this place. Psalm 66 verse 3. How terrible art thou in your ways. He said through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Not through the greatness of your discussion. It takes power. Don't see, listen. You are, you are coming from a family with transgenerational witchcraft. I know you are in Christ. But listen, Satan does not care. All that grammar is none of his business. It, you have to prove you are in Christ by taking advantage of the power that came through Christ to put him where he belongs. He says, Satan, he said, God had put all things under his feet. Speaking of man, he said, but as it is now, we do not yet see all things under his feet. Faith is not foolishness. You must summon the courage to confront things that have refused to go. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm born again of this and that and that. But you are seeing all of you, you are seeing patterns that reflect a healthy living of wicked spirits Jesus did not hide the fact that we are influenced perpetually by all kinds of spirits in our world who attempt to compromise on our testimony it was God's servant Bishop Oyedeko that shared how that when the ministry started great ministry now touching people across Africa and the world but then when they started people would not just come pastor for whatever reason, a very anointed man, signs and wonders, epochal revelations, but people would not come. And one time they were praying, engaging in warfare, intense warfare in the place of prayer. And the Holy Spirit asked him to come out. And he came out. And then after he had moved a distance, the Holy Spirit told him, turn and face, you know, look at the building and all of that. And then he saw a thick layer covering it. And this was what the Lord told him. He said, this is... The stronghold that makes people to misrepresent your ministry. Everything you do, they see it in a bad light. And he commanded it to go. And it left. And all of a sudden, there was, there was explosion. Kenneth E. Hagin, teaching on his encounter with Jesus. His book about his encounter with Jesus. He gave a very 
dramatic scenario that happened between him and Jesus. He said at a point when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him, Jesus was talking to him and was giving him some instructions. All of a sudden, a devil like an imp, a short devil, just appeared in between them and was jumping up and down, you know, distracting Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin said he thought Jesus Christ being there would stop that spirit from coming yet the spirit was there jumping up and down and jesus kept talking he seemed unaffected by whatever the demon was doing but kenneth hagin was affected and jesus kept speaking kenneth hagin said it worried him for a long time until he got angry in his spirit and the holy spirit gave him a strategy and he commanded that spirit he said in the name of jesus i rebuke you and he felt and, and left and this was what jesus told him according to kenneth hagin he said if you did not do anything about it i would not have done anything all that it is to be done i have done how can i is nonsense the day you get up you the best way to predict your future is to create it create it create it don't sit down waiting for it to come create it listen i don't believe in circumstances i create any circumstance i want i create it the bible tells us that the word is framed 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 your world your environment your reality is framed by the word of god obadiah 117 it says and upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness then it says the sons of jacob shall possess their possessions standing between the sons of jacob and their possessions are gates forces fraternities covenants of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of god's people and then he says that there shall be deliverance deliverance is not falling down necessarily it's not just manifesting and coughing out things no the context of deliverance is a platform that creates a separation on a legal basis between you and any force that keeps you bound are we together there are things that have held our lives brothers and sisters and it must let us go you must believe this don't sit down I'm, I'm telling you this thing so you don't sit down and waste your time i came with my spirit angry we're going to deal with the issue of the fruit of the womb extensively but then i want you to know the reason why the door has not opened is because there is a spirit sitting somewhere and i tell you if you let those spirits they will wreck your life wreck your life there are pastors whose churches have refused to grow and they think they preach well they are anointed people they are great people but there are all kinds of forces brothers and sisters wickedness is real the bible tells you the whole world lies in wickedness don't say i didn't do anything to anybody the condition to be vulnerable to oppression is that you are born once you arrive here that's all you you are in the middle of a story that predates your existence so as you come you just join in the whole thing don't you think you have to come up with a fresh trouble? No, it is there before you arrived. Have you not seen children hated for something their parents did before they got married? And they look at you and while they are insulting the man, they say, who is this? You say, my name is David. Who's, you are his child? You are the idiot like him? You just inherited an insult. Just because you were associated with a man while they were making that trouble you were in the loins of eternity and now you came and participated tonight i want you to believe god i want you to believe god brothers and sisters there's enough grace and unction for you to receive the miracle i believe in breakthrough breakthrough is a mystery that gives men speed where limits are taken kabbalataya limits are taken limits are taken limits are taken limits are taken i don't know what has held you down you must break this limit don't sit carelessly looking some of you have some results we all have different results but is that the best god can fast track your life that between now and december 31st he will put a new song in your mouth a song of praise in your heart he said many will see and fear and put their trust in him 
Hallelujah. And time will fail me to speak of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought the mouth of, of lions, shot the mouth of lions, wrought righteousness. Let's look at one scripture. Romans 4, 18. I just want to touch a little on this issue of believing and faith. We just finished a series on faith. Please, I encourage everyone as God grants you grace, make sure you get those series and listen to them. But I just want to challenge our faith a little, even as we prepare to pray. There's such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Jesus. Hallelujah. Such a strong anointing. I'm hearing footsteps. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Footsteps. And the Holy Spirit is telling me he's the one walking to people's lives. I'm hearing footsteps. No, 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 no. I, I believe me. Just, just, just believe me. Just walk with me. I'm hearing footsteps right now. God will not let me continue. He's walking to someone's life right now. Right now, I'm hearing footsteps in the spirit. I'm still hearing footsteps. And the Holy Spirit is telling me this is his footsteps. He's walking to someone's life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know where those people are. But right now, their stories must change. Must change. God is not even waiting for me to finish preaching. Something is happening here. Shabarato kasubaya. A change of story. Something must change. Something must change. Something must change. Something must change. Something is happening right now. How forcible are right words. Footsteps. I still hear these footsteps. I still hear these footsteps in my ears. And God is saying He's giving people testimonies. It's like the Spirit of God walking. Walking. He will meet you where you are. He will meet you where you are. Shabalarabalarabala. Sit down. Sit down. Let's finish up. Romans 4 verse 18. Just sit down. The waters has been stirred. I just want to give you an understanding on faith. You have a role to play. Listen, please. You have a role. Don't worry about what is happening. You have a role to play. Please hear me. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. You're not going to sit down and just expect to be healed. You have a role to be to play. Lift your hands, gentlemen. You raising your hand. I see an angel pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. Something looking like oil. That's what I see. I don't even know you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, receive that anointing right now. My spirit is fired up. I feel this thing on me now. I feel this thing on me now. I feel this anointing on me now. I feel this thing on me now. Shake a It's the anointing that comes to the office. I feel it on me right now. A lady with a breast lump, a lady with a breast lump has just been healed right now. Check yourself. Check yourself. A lady with a breast lump, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast. The, of your breast. the power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The Bible says, who against hope? Against hope have taught us. Against hope means in spite of the obstacles believed. Who against hope? I told you the starting point of faith is the presence of an obstacle. It is not unusual to see obstacles. 
there is a system to take care of them that system is based on your conviction backed up by understanding that compels you to take action the name of that action is faith not the name of the believing believing is not faith believing is restful confidence based on an understanding the end product of believing is conviction when you act it the name given to that action is faith listen you can hear the most anointed word if you do not mix it with faith be convicted that this is the word of God and then be ready to take steps so if you are here and you cannot stand be ready to stand don't just sit down saying well let's see what will happen you will go back home on that wheelchair you are deaf you are blind whatever it is genotype whatever make sure you are anchoring your spirit a door has refused to open make sure that you receive there are many faith actions praise and celebrating God is an action that's how you water whatever you sow listen Jesus said and I've corrected it here I've taught us he said if you have faith as a monster seed I've told you it's not the size if you have faith and your faith works like a monster seed a monster seed is sown that means if you can plant your faith and create an environment for it to grow in the similitude of a monster seed then you can say to this mountain he was not talking about the size of faith if you have faith and you have understood how to make it operate like a monster seed then you will do great things are we together tonight i want you to refuse that any force of darkness holding your destiny will go back with you i want you to refuse listen listen there is grace for increase i feel it in this place i just want you to believe me you know sometimes it's difficult communicating things to people because some we live in an environment of such unbelief i know the grace for increase listen increase is an unction honor is a mantle it can come upon a man you can carry it bodily don't sit down and just waste your time you may not be sick in your body but there is an encounter that produces a possibility upon your life listen i told you creation has never been disobedient something on you or not on you is what compels the response of creation an anointing is like a mantle it works like a charm when it is upon your life that anointing speaks is a language it will make creation respond to you in a certain way that's what you call favor that's what you call breakthrough don't sit down asking can i get a job that's a very foolish question very foolish question don't sit down asking can god make a way in the wilderness my god my god my god ah Don't sit down asking, can I get the child? No. What you should be asking is, can I get the twins or triplets? Not, can I get the child? Are we together? You are here tonight because you are trusting God to do something in your life. Face the business that brought you and be serious. Don't sit down laughing at others, criticizing others. Others will be taking radical steps of faith. Don't sit down there being cynical, laughing at them no connect and open up your spirit man of god open up for your ministry there can be more there can be more there can be more the pressure of ministry will kill you if you continue going the way you are going there is a system that builds you out even favor let me tell you this favor that we think is very free there are laws there is an unction that brings favor it is a manifestation of favor that is effortless but there is a system an exact system a science to its coming into your life hallelujah don't sit here and allow the over 40,000 or so people following online who are receiving and getting blessed and their lives are changing and you are here seated and you are wondering 
can God change me? Are you not seeing? Don't you see his signature all over? Listen. There are three platforms for us to receive in the kingdom. I'm rounding up now. There are three platforms for reception. I've taught this, but let me just touch it quickly. The first platform for reception is an encounter with the presence of God. When you meet God, the presence of God alone, listen, will leave certain deposits. It's like an intercourse between a man and his wife. There is a transfer. So when you meet God, there is a deposit. Listen, the second platform for reception is through your understanding and your application of the principles of the kingdom. There are dimensions of the power of God that has been vested in laws. You don't have to pray. The moment the laws are accurately um, operated, the power is released immediately. You don't have to be a Christian. But the third dimension, listen, the third dimension of reception is by tapping into the covenant a man has with God. Listen, men enter covenants with God that represents platforms for certain possibilities to find expression. Either through their personal press or through the office they represent and the possibilities it brings. Listen to me. You will never touch prosperity ignoring Abraham. Abraham entered a covenant with God that became the platform to see that dimension of God work in your life. There are men today who have covenants with God. Answers to prayer is not just by their personal faith. Their altar is a mystery and others can tap into that mystery through honor and receive results that are above and beyond your current level of believing God. When, when Saul came where Samuel was, just that atmosphere implicated him. He prophesied. All kinds of things happened to him. You need to understand that territories, human beings represent systems in the kingdom. And not there are certain audacious statements that when God makes, he's not just waiting for your personal faith. He creates the platform for receiving those miracles upon a covenant. Are we together now? God entered a covenant with Abraham. Is that true? And then Abraham slept with Hagar and then had Ishmael. Is that true? They were at the wilderness crying. Two of them were crying. God only had the cry of Ishmael. Why? Because Ishmael was Abraham as far as the covenant was concerned. So God could not listen to Hagar, but he had the voice of the Lord crying. And because of that, he came. Let me tell you, this ministry you see, like cobwebs, is an encapsulation of mysteries and covenants. Mysteries and covenants. Agreements with God that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen. I want you to leverage on those advantages and cheaply tap into certain things tonight. You are not alone. There is grace for you. Rise up on your feet. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Say na 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 na. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. minute before we begin to minister I want you to lift your voice and tell God everything you desire for him to do 
don't keep quiet don't say god knows open your mouth lord step into my finances lord step into my business lord step into my family faithful god hallelujah Se que para da bato sobra de bala da Lord take away the barrier that is stopping my doors from opening Take away the barrier oh God stopping my influence enlarge my coast papa tayaba Se que tele catara ba 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 answers prayers Lord I must take my testimony tonight I'm tired of this fibroid it dies this night this night it must go this night not tomorrow Lord favor must land upon my life I'm tired of struggling Favor must come upon my life. Shikepa go soto bakata. Those online, make sure you are praying. The anointing of the Spirit will reach you where you are. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign. hallelujah hallelujah the lord is starting tonight with an impartation don't bring them out 
I am seeing the Lord speaking to me and he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies and it's coming on 21 people 21 people I stretch my hands right now I stretch my hands right now receive that impartation 21 people divine strategies the wisdom of God receive it that idea Kato Sotoya divine idea someone has been praying Lord show me the way here it comes the anointing brings it help them please the anointing brings it upon your life 21 people the Lord shows me 21 people an impartation supernatural strategies Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen. The Lord is speaking to me. And this is a mystery. God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Listen. Two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play mic. Something supernatural is happening. Ah. The Lord is taking me in the spirit and I'm seeing a map. Get ready, please. I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria and I'm landing in Kaduna State. I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now. Right now, right now, right now. By the spirit of God, Kaduna State. Kaduna State. I see an anointing, only Kaduna State. Shabarapakata. Embreketeta. Kaduna State. A miracle happening for Kaduna people. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I don't know why God does this. Brothers and sisters, don't ask me. Don't ask me. This is an operation. It's called the Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Now I see Benway State. Benway State. I see an anointing on Benway State. Now, an anointing on Benway State. Benway State. Shakatoda Parata. Reketekete. Help them, please. Benway State. You can't stand it. You don't have to know whether you don't know your state. Benway State. Miracles. Miracles. Go into Benway State. I hear or to call in the spirit. A miracle happening right there. Right there. All those connected to that bloodline. There is a miracle for you right now. Don't trivialize what is happening here, brothers and sisters. These are territorial breakthroughs. Territorial breakthroughs. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for Stephanie. 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 I'm hearing a name, Stephanie. Please, let's save time. Who is Stephanie? You're like a red dress or something like that. Stephanie. Who is that? Stephanie. There is a Stephanie I'm seeing. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone and in the vision the Lord is showing me it's like a red dress but I'll pray for you lift your hands the Lord says I should tell you witchcraft ends in your family witchcraft ends in your family you will hear testimonies that will surprise you right now I stretch my hands towards you now it ends by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Johanna 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 I'm hearing a name, Johanna. Please save our time, Johanna. I don't know who that person is. 
Johanna, I won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast. Johanna, 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 Johanna. Whether you're here inside or outside. Johanna, Johanna, Johanna. There is a lady following us from Lagos. Your name is Blessing. Your name is Blessing. You are in a room. You are following from a laptop. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to pray. I tell you, I feel fire in this place. It's time to command deliverance. It's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives forces of darkness the lord is bringing deliverance to your family your family the lord is bringing deliverance i'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family and the lord is bringing deliverance right now right now to the family right now to the family the lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family a major deliverance to the family. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. As I begin to pray for you. All those devils. That has tied the lives of people. It doesn't mean you are possessed. It's not an insult. You may not even know. You may be minding yourself. Just like you are standing now. I'm going to command those devils. They must go. They are not only going to live your life. They must live your family. Are we together? Listen. Some of you brought many prayer lists. Just one spirit living will produce all that testimony. Believe me. Believe me. Lift your hands. My heart, my soul, I give to you. I bow to you my savior and king lift your hands thank you jesus father thank you for your anointing to deliver to set free there are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people and in the name of the lord jesus christ they must go i want you to bring them out now they must go they must go now at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus you'll be surprised to see what happens kai 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 I see spirits of delay, 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 delay. Spirits that have held men down, all kinds of spirits. Father, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, Lord, as your people shout, may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough, 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 flowing sound, my flowing sound. In the name of Jesus, one, two, Three, shout Jesus. Now I command those demons. Go now. Go now. Go now. Lift your voice and begin to command every spirit. Every devil. Help them please. Go now. I command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people. You must go now. Inside and outside. I command you inside and outside bring them out I command you by the power of the Holy Ghost lift your voice I command you you must go now now by the anointing of the Spirit release their destinies release their destinies release their breakthrough lift your hands while you pray I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them and the Lord is saying to unlock those chains unlock those chains that anointing will come on certain people right now Father I decree and declare in the name of Jesus wherever they are any place in your life that has been chained and tied right now in Jesus name I command those gates be open be open, be open, be open, be open by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
Shekete kete koto soto tash. Rekete kete. Chains. Chains. Be broken. Ushers please. Chains. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. Chains. Be broken. Be broken. Kala patoshaya. Release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity, we have to be very fast because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity, charity. 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 I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. The Lord wants to bring breakthrough for Charity. The second overflow. There are two people God is touching there. The second overflow. I see the anointing coming on two people. The overflow. The roadside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Something is going to happen here. Now, ushers, I want you to be sensitive. I'm going to pray for certain people. You will have to help them. The grace for speed, listen, is going to come on some people. Physically, they will find themselves trying to run, help them. So that it's not like they won't be able to control themselves. It's a prophetic act by the spirit so that they don't enjoy anybody lord in the name of jesus guys be sensitive please in the name help them please it's already happening that's the instruction god is giving me an anointing will come on you physically you will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough right now lord i release that anointing give men speed give men speed give men speed 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 by the power of the holy ghost Give men speed. Pato Sotobaya. Run like Elijah. Help them. Run like Elijah. Help her. Help her. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Grace for speed. I release it. I release it. From my spirit. I release it. Grace for speed. No more stagnation. No more retrogression. Run with the grace of Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahas. Hallelujah. Charity. Charity. Are you married? The Lord wants to give you two miracles. Huh? Number one, God wants to settle you maritally. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Second, what are you doing? I just finished school. I'm a graduate now. Huh? I'm a graduate now. You are a graduate? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing Abuja. Huh? Yes, sir. Abuja? Yes. What is Abuja? I have a fiancé. Uh, you have somebody there. Yes, sir. That's the person to marry you. Okay, Did you sir. tell me? No, sir. Did you tell me? No. That's what I'm telling you. I'm looking at you. I said God will settle you Amen. maritally. Amen. Huh? And then God will give you a job. Amen. Supernatural job. Amen. Because it's your desire. Amen. God will give you a job. Amen. The Lord is saying I should prophesy to you. I'm opening a new chapter over your life. The past uh -uh. your future has to change it, the, what the past is is not a good testimony and the Lord is saying I'm giving you a new chapter a new chapter come my dear in the name of Jesus God is giving you a job 
May he connect you maritally. Huh? Is your name charity? Is your name charity? In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Delay ends now. Delay ends now. I pray for your auntie. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'll minister to one more case before I pray. I want to pray specifically for barren people. I'm going to pray that before we do a lot of other things. Before we call the sick out. Thank God there are many hands today. And so we're able to do a very quick walk. Ladies, when I count three, just shout, I receive. Don't worry. Follow me and do my stupid thing. Are you ready now? One, two, three. There is an opening. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Many people are entering it. I see it. It's a door breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. You're mighty in this place. I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see being released to people in the realm of the spirit, doors, strange doors. I told you there is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. The language tonight is more, 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 more. There is more, more anointing, more grace, more unction, more wisdom. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. The Lord is leading me to pray for brothers. Lift your hands. You'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Lord wants to release grace for establishment. Listen, there is such an anointing. Don't be foolish. Receive it. Receive it with all your spirit. There is a spirit, especially in this side of the north. Men get established very late. Very late. Very late. You make money late. You build a house late. It's a bad spirit. God wants to release something. Those online, you can follow. I want to pray. I see this thing falling on many men. Jesus, it is your word. You have released this word. I put authority upon this prophecy and I declare, let it enter like an arrow into the life of men. Right now, take it. Receive that grace right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Grace, grace. Strange establishment. Doors opening. Doors opening. In their own accord. Help them. Doors opening. I put you in a platform spiritually. Where you experience speed and establishment. In the name of Jesus. Help them please so they don't enjoy themselves. My God. Be established. Be established. Be established. Be established. I lose your hands. I untie your hands. Every brother here, I untie your hands. Be established by the Spirit. Be established by the Spirit. Go and buy that land by the Spirit. Go and build that house by the Spirit. I open strange doors. Don't say you are too young. It's an anointing. It's not your effort. Receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Now leave those who are standing here very quickly. If you are here specifically, please listen. You are here specifically trusting God to stamp the feet of Satan in your family over the issue of children. You know, God announced beginning of October that the theme for this miracle service, you've had the testimonies. Please don't say they have prayed for me before. Don't allow that unbelief destroy you. Are we together? While you are coming, there is a lady who will shout under the anointing. It is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness. It's a loud shout. It will be loud enough for everyone to hear. By the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. That's the shout there. That's the shout by the Spirit. There is an anointing to pray for the barren. Come, please. All those, whether man, woman, if you are married. Look, don't come out here if you are not married. Why are they here? Why are they all here? you must be married except if you are standing in for someone don't stand here doubting there is an anointing i see a river some of you as you are standing right now the power of god will come on you just before i even start praying yeah. look at this will you open up the gate Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Lift your voice in one minute and sing it from your heart. Will you open up the gate? For you by myself that's the instruction i will do it very fast you don't have to tell me any stories i don't care what they said low spam count um infertility i don't care the report as you receive that touch if you are standing for someone call them let them know you are praying for them are we together now don't just say i receive and then you stand there let the people know what god is doing i'll have to do this very fast after that we'll pray for the sick generally we have a lot to do don't lose touch of this don't come for koinonia and then sit down this is not a museum let your heart be connected because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit i'm going to be very fast i'm seeing listen i'm seeing something like a bird is jumping out of a lady now one person here i don't know who that person is but the lord is asking that until that happens like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now as i pray for you many of you strange things will happen some of you are standing for other people but as i pray for you god is securing something in your life you don't have to come out please if you do not belong to this category that's the lady i'm talking about now i'll pray quickly just give us um uh, uh, keys just play something very quickly father in the name of jesus let everyone here return with a miracle child no matter what the spirit is no matter what the issue is fibroid infertility low sperm count whatever i don't care what the name is it must live right now in the name of jesus please shift very quickly as i lay my hands on you it is done receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace now go and carry your miracle child madam carry your miracle baby carry it now carry it now my god i tell you i see babies literally in the realm of the spirit carry it now carry it now carry it right now carry it right now miracle 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 there is an unusual grace here there is an unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace 
unusual grace. As I lay my hands on you, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Heal now. Open up the gates in the name of Jesus. Grace, grace, grace. Shabalarabalaraba. Rekete kete. Emproto koto balarabalaraba. Shabalarabalaraba. Grace, grace, grace. Help them, please. Let's save time. Grace. Receive your miracle, baby. My God. My God. Testimonies. Wombs opening. Fertility be restored. Receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus. Bring it. In the name of Jesus. 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 Return with the miracle child. 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 No barrenness. Out. Out now. Release her now. Now. Out. Out of her. Return with your child. Miracles. 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 In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Let it be open. In the name of Jesus. Grace. 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 Grace, grace. The Lord is healing irregular menstruation. Irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now so that you can carry your baby. Your child out, out of her now. Return with your miracle child now. Miracle child, miracle child, miracle child. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it ends now. Power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go now. Keep praying in the spirit. Don't just watch. Miracles. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracles. The Lord is anointing you. Receive that anointing now. Mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, grace. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace, 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 grace. Open. Open now. Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now. Shaka baradoka toka
while I'm praying for you, I want a woman to come up. Yes. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant. You have been having nightmares. Somebody comes to you in the night. You have you even wake up shouting. You've not been able to sleep. There is a pregnant woman here with that situation. God wants to set you free. Please, where are you? If you care for you, can come and God will set you free right now. You are pregnant, but I'm seeing you having very bad dreams. Like a nightmare. Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself. For someone. Ah, hallelujah. Kai, I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. It almost looks like a physical living thing, like a worm or like a snake. Literally comes out of your private part. It comes out and goes back. This is like a, a living, a real object. Please, who is that? I have to pray for you. Like I said, if you have the courage, there's nothing to be ashamed. What, who is this one? Why is she here? coughing out no 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 don't bring her in jesus name you're okay come in jesus name it is done the lord sets you free by the power of the holy spirit i need to pray for that lady honestly this is a serious thing in fact it's not just one i'm seeing two of you come and stand here something it looks like a worm but it's bigger than it you see it it comes out and goes back on its own who is that you're the one god bless you for your courage can you celebrate her don't be afraid see look let me tell you this is this is like a spiritual hospital so this is not a place immediately i saw it even me i honestly i my body was doing me one kind but i thought you have to say it. this is bad it's like a doctor madam kai and you love god oh. don't be afraid huh do you know this thing where are you from because I'm looking at you, you are supposed to be a very great woman. I look at you and I see somebody. Ah, this is strange. I'm seeing, let me show you what I'm seeing. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing witchcraft from Delta State. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing a white woman. I'm seeing a white woman, but I'm seeing you. And the Lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman. That's the vision that I'm seeing. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't know that. Look at me. My dear, look at me. Because I'm seeing this. You look far, far, far older than your age. Somebody even see you and say, Mommy, there's no mommy anything. You need prayers because you too, are you married? You are trusting God for a life partner. It's even why you came here. Look at this. The devil is a liar. See, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the waster. That will want your life to keep going without achievement i'm praying for you now may that devil live your life forever in the name of jesus the spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of jesus i use her as a point of contact this is a nice woman she didn't bargain for this and she loves god are you seeing that now who knows probably were trained by white men or she speaks very intelligently but everything grounded hold my hand man to a point that that do you know what it means another object did you plant an object in your body comes out through you at will goes back at will for those of you who think witchcraft is not real you are joking you are watching one right now not pile oh i'm not talking of pile Hold my hands, man. I'm angry in my spirit. In the name of the Lord God that I serve, I speak to you from the depth of my spirit. Right now, I command that devil, let her go now. Out! Out! In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on your stomach. I command that wicked spirit, whatever your name is, don't only leave her, pack your load with you. And go out of this woman's life. I 
I restore you even physiologically in the name of Jesus Christ this old face is not your own you are not that old I change it in the name of Jesus Christ help her give Jesus praise father thank you supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands it's over over in the name of Jesus over in the name of Jesus it's over in the name of Jesus there's one mama here the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people there's one mama here I'm seeing in a vision the power of God will land on you 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 may not even be expecting it not everybody this, this is an, like an elderly woman but I'm seeing an anointing right now wherever you are father something will land it's like fire it will land on one mama now supernatural grace you will start laying hands on the sick oh that's the woman there help her help her please bring her here supernatural anointing supernatural anointing for the for barrenness look at this look at this this is an elderly woman for god's sake Shera taba roto koto baradia, lembra bata tatso kedia, ekara taka tala totia. Father, take her to that level. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace and I bring you to that realm. Release miracles to women in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural. Supernatural. Daddy. Why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir? For barrenness? You? Where is your wife, sir? He's here, but I can't locate her. Madam, come. You will see a man like, hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child? You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? Wife? Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please, so that we save time? Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please, so that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. If you ever tell me wickedness is not real, if you ever tell me wickedness is not real, our daddy's children would have been married now with their own children. Ejime, am I correct? Look at this. Abraham waited 25 years. Our daddy has waited 32 years. Sir, you came here by faith. You are our father here. And you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here. Look at me, sir. I want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that I'm the one that has told you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not. I don't care whether she can give birth or not. I decree to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hand, sir. You will not have a child. You will have children. 
listen sir i'm not saying god told me to tell you i am telling you there is something called a prophet's reward in the name that is above all names i speak over your life that force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity i cancel it right now sir you are struggling financially i have to pray for you god wants to open a door for you i, I hope you're not embarrassed sir, that i'm talking to you please hold my hands jesus please change our daddy's story let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now in the name of jesus christ i pray amen now please we're going to be very fast you are here for yourself you are not married you are standing for something. in the name of jesus christ supernatural miracle now we are going to be very fast you can see it's past nine but there are so many things we need to do we are going to do two things at the same time all those who are here trusting god for any miracle any miracle aside from barrenness except if you have another thing i don't care what it is please you are going to come there are men of god here who are going to lay hands on you very quickly it's a miracle service now look at this i want you to organize yourself uh those outside oh, hold on please hold on overflow two just walk right to the front you don't have to come here overflow to the whole of those occupying the roadside just walk right to the front of your your stage there overflow one here just walk right to the front here all those who are here you can just come out come out organize yourself you are sick or you are standing in for people jesus listen if you are standing here for impartation go back please 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 don't make a fool of yourself we are going to pray for i know some of you just want me to touch you there's nothing wrong with you don't play games with god go back to your seat you will receive impartation some of you there's nothing wrong you just want in case if there's something i should still pray go back please we don't have that time are we together now i'm not joking please there is no time huh so those outside just obey instructions please some of you think i have to be the one to touch you that's unbelief i i spent time talking about faith here just walk outside stand there overflow look at how many people pastor for god's sake look at this look at how many people hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain